Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Night's Last Call. My name is Derek Melinda, and I am joined today by, well, uh, uh, the normal group of knights. <laughs> the, wi- the wide shot, of course, uh, not always the best shot. Oh, but uh, we, 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 <laughs> we are joined today by, uh, of course, by Bob and Smith, but, uh, but our uh, good friend Kaz, who you may remember from our Quest for the Frozen Flame. Uh, adventure Thrawn. you played Thrawn the the barbarian the the greatest wrestler of all time that's right the complete meme build just to <laughs> just to piss me off pretty much yes yeah, yeah so couldn't climb for shit though you hated the wrestling background it here's the thing let me be clear about something here i think yes. i think I, I think grab i think yeah i think grappling is fine but the wrestler archetype is definitely designed like with an, a nod towards like wwe they want to suplex things. you know like like in a real life situation Sweet. you're not pile dry you're not like you're not Zangief. But if you did. Did we suplex the dinosaur? Did we get the shot? That's how I got yeah. a... It was that that's one how I got biggest. a pet. That's right. Yep. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure we did that. Mm-hmm. Right. Because yes. otherwise, there was no point to that. I, I put it in a submission <laughs> that's hole. That's the only highlight. <laughs> and then Derek gave up and gave me a, a dinosaur pet. Right. I was like... As, as one does. I was like, here, have a level 10 pet. I don't, I don't, I don't really care. We rode it um, around. Yeah, we rode it around. Um, so today is... Uh, we had the patrons... You know, Kaz is in town. So we said... Hey, you know, normally on a Thursday, uh, it's just me at home in the office talking to you all, uh, you know, maybe doing a first look or talking about Pathfinder 2. Um, but since Kaz was in town and we have this awesome studio, we figured why don't we just get together and we will uh, kind of chat with you all and do a nightlife episode. And we asked our patrons what they would like to see. And uh, the answer was AMA. They want to they just want to ask us questions and have us give answers. So there you go. We can see your chat, but. Be realized that you know stuff does kind of uh, you know go go. <laughs> I see the question from Hoyrit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, the chat can kind of scroll by at a, at a pretty reasonable clip. So if you do want to make sure that your question or tip or que- sorry question gets asked and answered, uh, just throw it in a super chat or throw it in a tip because we have a yeah, it pops off to the side. we have a separate thing off to the side that makes that a little bit easier for us to, to see. So, um, but yeah, uh, we, otherwise some, otherwise we'll kind of we'll kind of answer your questions. I'm so. gonna send some behind that scenes pictures too you guys got to really see this i don't know how often you guys have shown like the whole some people have been yeah. up to the studio yeah. um we've had a couple patrons who've been up to the studio yeah, yeah. right right but um derek keeps adding like a light here someone tips and he buys another light right. well then... actually that so we have two goals tonight <laughs> one is uh set could set could use one set could use more lights oh my derek gosh. It could use of course more it lights. Lights. <laughs> and i hope they mean the torch lights that we're um, put in. and then the other one our tip goal is help us quote unquote upgrade i use the term upgrade our mic booms the reason why he's upgrade it's because you can see that Bob and I are on these mm. low profile ones here, but these are actually yeah. cheaper than these ones. Really? Yeah. These, these ones, those ones move well. These ones move really well. Yeah. They're they're road. They're really yeah. really high end. Um, they're like professional level broadcasting booms, but they just don't work as well for us because of the relative close proximity yeah. that we all have and all that other stuff. This is how like Dirt typically has his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got we got we got Shrek and Dirt in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dirt knows what I'm talking about. Yes, there we go. Um, it, uh, unfortunate pumpkin says, "Is that a Fabula Alt Mice? I can't believe you could tell that. That's crazy. Well, I mean, that is like uh, his favorite. Pumpkin has been playing the crap out of that yeah. game. Um, I made him a look at this cover. Like, I made him. A, that's what he wants a PC to be. and for his game like, artwork. And and we have a uh, before the stream even started, we got a super chat from our our good friend Cybersmith. Uh, who had a question? So we we're going to definitely get to that. And I again, I, if if we miss your question, just put it back in chat. We'll try to you know get to it. But again, if you really want to get an answer, just even throw it in like a three dollars. You know, I think that's the minimum three dollars super chat because we'll be more likely to be able to see it. Um, so before we get into that, I just want to say that this is a really good fucking. This game. is like your new favorite game. It kind of is. And Derek I, has been talking about this. In no, our, no, no. Let me channel, like, let me show you something that is. And then unbe- you guys are going to play it when I wasn't. Let me show you something that is unbelievable. <laughs> you made a character. I've been making characters. Derek never makes characters. Like, like he'll get excited about a game, and like when he's excited, he'll be like, "Oh, I'm looking forward to like exploring these ideas, or wonder what the players will do in this tense situation." Right? Like L five R. Like Derek's yeah. never been like, "I'm going to make a samurai." Right? Right. He has been just nerding out. Am I going to have to GM this? I, I, no, I, I would be. I'm, I'm, it, I'll be honest with you. A couple of things. Number one, I think it would be really fun to GM, but it is legitimately a, a game that would would be one with that I would have a lot of fun playing. It. Did you guys yeah. actually play last Friday? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. You guys were talking about it. No, we yeah. were dead. 
Yeah, yeah. Every, oh, yeah. everyone just draw. yeah, every, everyone yeah. just decided that it was better yeah. that we just uh, okay. sleep and and recover and be old men. My okay. doctor took like a pint of blood out, and then it was wondering why my heart was high because it was trying to make up. So yeah. it, what, is that 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 is a full character sheet there? Uh, for all intents and purposes, yes. Um, I mean, obviously they have actual character sheets What's that are name? a little bit more complicated. Uh, Kale Silverwind. Okay, good. Kale. I just want to make sure you had a name. It wasn't just like stats. Is he, is he a lancer or a dragoon? He is a stoic samurai of a fallen kingdom. Oh, all right. He went with, uh, His theme is Cecil. guilt. Not Cecil. What was uh, Cecil. Cecil. No. That's a dark knight. Uh, um, um, Fuck. FF6. Yeah, cyan. Cyan. Yes. Yes. It, it, it's definitely He's cyan. He's basically a samurai. Yeah, basically. Very strong cyan vibes. Uh, his theme is guilt. His origin is from the country or the nation of Eldar. He is a Weapon Master 3 Fury 2. Um, we got a $2 super chat from Self-Confessed Cynic who says, shout out to Penguin and Ben for all the uh, F-A, I think he means F-U, love. F-U? Um, <laughs> is this like an anime type thing? It's, it's, it's a Final no, Fantasy. It's a, so it's like, yeah. you don't like anime. So it's like, it's like weeb, fantasy? Final Fantasy's weeb-like. Okay. okay. Right. So it's not full-on anime nonsense like the, what Ben it. likes. Okay. Well, that's what I like. This is like, <laughs> like, this is like as far as Derek will go for weeb. That's actually accurate. Right. So it's like, Okay, so yeah, so we, so but you're talking about it's really like Final Fantasy. That's it's Final Fantasy. Okay, so I played yeah. a little bit of that. So yeah, yeah like the is. the the inspiration I, I got to meet the guy actually, the new book which just came out, Gen Con, uh, the creator of the game gave to me for free. Uh, I, I stopped by his booth at Gen Con to buy it, and he was like, "Oh, Night's Last Call, dude, that was so awesome." Please, let me give this to you for free. No. Yeah, I was like, no, let me pay for it. And he was like, you know what? No, he's like, no, you, you guys did a whole stream about us. You talked about us for four hours. Well, geez, now it's going to get sold out like uh, online because oh, you're it, talking it, about it. It would more. sell out every single day. This one, this game. I can't, I can't even find that book. This game, really? This game won um, gold. Any. Also, wow. for, it took me like best product or a best year rules. to get the main book. Yo, the, it was out of print. There's like a steampunk setting in this, which looks incredible. Well, now I feel like I have to get this book. Yeah, so yeah. basically the, the default thing is uh, it, it, it has three settings that they talk about in this book. One is the high fantasy. Yes. The other one is the sort of more like, I hesitate to call it slice of life. Okay. But it's more of like that really eco-focused, almost more like Secret of Mana Ooh. type way. And then the third is techno fantasy. Yeah. You know, your FF8, your FF7. So how do they define high fantasy? I think they define Final Fa uh, High Fantasy as probably like uh, more like Final Fantasy IV. Got it. So like I mean, airships, airships and, like, and stuff I mean, like I that. I made a character characters. for someone yeah. in our chat. I think it was Brian. I think it was Brian. And it was two two giant shields. I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm even making character. Like I'm making PC so art for PC. I've like, seen that character in Final. But I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, what is this? And I think I think Pumpkin's got like a Badass. fire sword guy, like yeah. basically from Demon um, Slayer. <laughs> but. And again, I mean, best this, game and silver for best product. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. it won gold for best game, silver for best product. So two, right. two Ennies. Well, now I'm like, why are we playing anything else? No, it's, it's not even that. I, I mean, you obviously don't have to convince me to play this. What's there, the difference between product and game? You know what? So this is, we actually have, they get a, they give an any for best product. They give an any for best game. And then they give an any for best rules. How are rules? I do not know. We, I, 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 I don't know if it's just a, um, it's just an excuse I, for they okay. can no, they no, can no, give no, out no, more no. awards. I, I, I can see this, right? Product can mean lots of different things, right? Including like uh, a tool, right? Like like uh, true. Uh, Paizo comes out with some real. I, I I talk about it all the time, right? Like dice tower. Uh, no, those are lame. But uh, by the so, way, uh, Vin did give us another super chat. Said, Shout out to full on anime nonsense. And to be clear, <laughs> I don't think that's this book. Though. To be clear, you you could go full on anime yeah. nonsense with this if you wanted to. Yeah, but you wouldn't because you have taste. I wouldn't because I, I have right. taste. It's yeah. just funny to me, like. I'm, I just watched the wave of our channel, our Patreon, and I feel like, like you know, it goes like this: like Traveler, buy all the Traveler books. Buy all the, now I'm like, I'm if, yep. if it wasn't sold before, it RPGs would be sold out now. Are amazing, <laughs> and we should play all of them. I get all it. the time. And what's gonna happen is once everyone buys all of these books, it, they'll show up on Humble Bundle, <laughs> just like Traveler. That's did. true. That's true. <laughs> That's what. But I'm here's getting. the thing: <laughs> like, like you know, and Ben makes fun for us all the time. Flavor of the month, right? No. Like I still want to play Traveler, right? Me too. And yeah. I want to play this. Like the goal yes. is there's, like, there's you know, many, there's not enough days. Well, that's why we get rich. You know, or, we, or, we, we sell our company, right? And, right? Right? And, and we go. What are we gonna do? So it's Monday, so buy this that's company. FU. <laughs> Tuesdays Traveler. <laughs> Sci-fi Tuesdays. Sci-fi right. Tuesdays. What days for the Wednesdays. family? Because I gotta put a family day in there. <laughs> get them oh, involved with RPG. Yeah. Then it's a win-win-win. Yeah, I feel like 100%. I could get them in a tiny D six or easy six. I feel like they'd be into that. Yeah. 
Um, so before I'm, we I'm really getting into maybe before we get too far down into the do weeds, <laughs> uh, we did have a super chat from Cybersmith. Yes. Uh, before he said, um, he says he's going to be missing this because he's over in the UK and time zones. Um, but he does have a question. Most TT most TTRPGs are based on mechanics predicating ubiquitous smartphones. Uh, is it time for games that I believe he said, uh, you know, uh, predating? I'm sorry, predating. Is it time for games that make more use of these? devices and tools yeah. so in other words first of all i want to ask is cybersmith uh a freelancer for paizo because uh <laughs> clearly he's being paid by the work <laughs> well <laughs> very very big words and yeah. really what i think it's a good way of saying and i've, I've brought this up myself or, or wondered about this I, I see the way that people play okay we've got pathfinder 2 and there's a whole thread right now on our discord about i think it's called fiddly finder or something like that and it's basically just <laughs> sounds, about sounds awful no 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 it, no it, well, it <laughs> is it, terrible. It, it is it, it's it's called fiddly finder because it's basically about like what are the things in pathfinder 2 that are very fiddly and by fiddly yeah. i mean just like, I like we could put a different word fiddly is that's the word that everyone uses fiddly like, it, by bob the way, is the, thinking about a penis <laughs> i'm just saying we could use a better word okay well Okay. Well, I board gamers have been vision. using fiddly forever because what it means is you're going to fiddle with it. Fiddling yeah. and fiddle. It, when it, and it's a small, it's a little. It's tiny. It's, yeah. you're exact, you got it. See, everyone here is smart except for I, you. Oh, I, I, so, I don't have <laughs> too smart. <laughs> so, so what I was go. saying is that there's a lot of things at Pathfinder 2 that are very fiddly. A great, a classic example. And, and, and Vin and I, were, the first thing that we shouted out in this thing was backstabber trait from yeah. Pathfinder oh, 2. Oh, God, that one's awful. Right? You're like level 15, 16, and it, right. and it and it's doing plus one or two damage. Like, who cares? Doesn't it also, like, upgrade off? No, no. It, it, it's plus one for, like, 80% yeah. of the game, and then near the end of the game, when the monsters have, like, 350 hit points, yep. it goes from plus one to plus two. Yeah, it's terrible. And now, but technically, there is a part of you that if you're playing Pathfinder 2 correctly, there is a part of you right. that needs to spend some amount of CPU time yes. to remember Waste. that your damage is plus two. Uh, negative, because no one's going to bother with that. It, you know, it, like, you know how they just forget about the entire inspiration system of 5e? Yeah. I'm pretty sure no one uses Backstabber. I mean, how? But you can the VTT. And well, I think that, that's, that, where, that's, and where, that's where, where And that's yeah. where I'm it just does it for you. And that is where I think Cybersmith's yeah. question was going for. I've seen people play on Foundry and... You know, I see Shadram in chat that I had seven different conditions on my character last weekend and a headache in real life. Back and, back. you know, um, and it's like, <laughs> well, we got a super chat from uh, from Dirt Guyver. He said, can you get this at your favorite local game store? Great Lakes Game Emporium. I heard of that place. Yeah, located in Mentor, Ohio. You can get all of your RPG <laughs> needs there. You might be able to order or pick up a copy of Root or Fabula Ultima or maybe uh, maybe a. a, a order some traveler i don't okay, think he has traveler yeah, in stock but can i get those autographed by like a semi-famous uh role player who streams online and plays a hedgehog who's adorable and causes <laughs> massive terrorism you can what <laughs> tell me more <laughs> um so uh but yeah so <laughs> thank you dirt for that yeah. um self-confessed so, sitting uh vin coming in and said the, the name path fiddler was 100 percent for people like bob yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what i'm talking about okay <laughs> but so anyways i see now the way that people play pathfinder 2 and it's awful and and I, you know there are like, a lot of people go I, I wouldn't play if it wasn't on foundry or i don't know how you play this game with your foundry and and to be fair level one two and and to be fair a lot of people Low levels, I, I feel like you play on first a lot period. of people i don't okay. think play beyond level five i'm honestly believe this i think there's a lot of people who level played. six i think Okay, oh, we're no, you're, you're level seven, eight seven. or seven or seven, eight. Seven, I think it's seven. We're I think we just, well, I died. We're like, oh, you're dead. Yeah, but I, I, I'm going to be coming back at level seven. But. Well, George and I are almost eight. Like, well, we're not you, playing anymore. We're gonna when you watch, uh, so, I mean, in theory, every time you, and I, by the way, I, I've watched a bunch of our games in Northern Reaches. And I see it Shame every, on you. and I see it every <laughs> single time. Uh, everyone goes through the whole process of hit. Uh, flat check DC five. Like it's every single, t flat check DC five. Yep. Every single time, because. Everyone always forgets. Of, oh, uh, I you have forgot every single. You forgot. You forgot it every single attack. Every single attack. But here's the thing: it's like, in, in theory, every time you make an attack roll in Pathfinder Two, you first need to. Do, is there some form of concealment? And if I, if there is, do I have a sense that can get through that concealment? Okay. Then the concealment suit, like it's very common. In okay. Pathfinder. It's fairly. It's pretty common. Then it's like, do I have a circumstance bonus to my attack? Do I have a status bonus to my attack? Do they have a circumstance penalty to their armor class? Do they have a status bone status penalty to their armor class? N okay, you figured all that out. You've made all your dice rolls. You've hit. Okay, how much damage did you do? Well, how many weapon dice do you have? Yep. What are your traits that apply here? 
Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't even count. When you're making your attack, uh, is it your second attack? Do you have map? Do you have an agile weapon? Should it be lower? Do you have fin- is it finesse? Are you using your decks? Are you sweeping? Right? Are you sweeping? Does that qualify? And then when you hit, do, do you have any do you have any static or status bonuses to damage that are circumstantial or status? Bonus? And you have to make that. And then oh, also you're going to be rolling two or three or four weapon dice plus a couple elemental runes of dice, plus some status bonus damage from your um, uh, enlarged spell. Don't forget your rage bonus damage, also backstabber. And you're just like... Oh, I already forgot temp HP. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, here's the thing, though. Most people who like that is why they're, they're playing Pathfinder. See, yes, but then these are the people who go into Foundry and are like, I love Foundry, it just takes care of everything for me. Yeah, and but- I go, if, if, you, if you want it, to just be taken care of, then why do you want it at all? But math people also like calculators. What's that? That's what math people like calculators. They like their <sighs> tools. They want to do their math, but they want to also, it's sort of to do it for them. Yeah, but they're, 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 but okay, that's a good point, except math for them is a means to an end, not an end unto itself. Fair. Like, do you, do you really, you know, like, do you care? Well, that- okay, I don't think people are necessarily yay math. I think. They like all these really insignificant choices occasionally adding up to be something and feeling like, good thing I took Backstabber. Right. I mean, it's one thing to have a decision. It's another thing and have to math it out. It's another thing for then you do it through all that and it fucking like, didn't matter. I, I'll and give you an example here. And, 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 you know, this, this will shock people because they're just like, oh, Aaron loves fourth edition without, without question. And like one fourth, yeah. you were talking about fiddly games. Here's the thing. Pathfinder's got nothing on 4E. You run around a mid level. If you're Paragon or higher, and you have a combat round in 4E, it's insane the level of crap which is going on. There are so many rules interactions occurring just on your move. On That's your my attack. fear of 4E. That's my yeah. fear. Well, what I'm saying though is, here's the difference, okay? Because if you like that, then 4E absolutely delivers, because those things all matter, and and all those little rules interactions you actually feel the weight and impact behind it, right? You, I cannot really remember a time where we had these rules interactions in 4E, and I was like, why are we doing this? Yeah. This is pointless, right? So, but but in Pathfinder, and I'm not, try, I'm not trying to shit on Pathfinder, I'm just saying they, they took a very- We would s- never do that. Well, <laughs> well no, because people just think I randomly attack without reason. No, I have reasons. Right? <laughs> I say, I say that even when you're backing on 4th edition, you're praising it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I mean, well, if you're clear, now I'm talking about two tangents here, right? <laughs> 4E is great until you're tired of 4E, mm-hmm. okay? And then you need to take a very hard break yeah. because you will yeah. burn out, right? Yeah. So if you are not in the mood to be fiddly, you literally can't play that game. There isn't, like, a lighter option. Right. You, you walk away from the table. So it's great when you want it, and it's terrible when you don't, right? Uh, whereas I would say even a game like Pathfinder 2, you can play PF2 in a much lighter version, right? There's plenty of other pillars, if you will, where the game can hold up fine, and, and, and combat doesn't have to be the most, like, insane thing 4e is designed to have an incredible combat experience which is great until that's not what you want because you're fucking tired because it's friday and you yeah. had a long week at work to be fair there, I, I i i mean i'm not saying that everyone who's playing pathfinder 2 should go out and run out and play fourth edition dd there are problems with it like it's kind of you know illegal to play basically <laughs> online yeah, apparently um but uh I, I will say that if you really like that sort of super fiddly number Absolutely numerical sure, bonus yeah. then 4e is definitely right. you know for you traveling you know, but, really but to, to finish, <laughs> finish that thought though I think the frustration of Pathfinder comes from a lot of these rules interactions don't actually really matter because there's a the thing. Backstabber is a perfect example. I don't care. Cyber could be in the chat right now. Plus one damage at level 18 doesn't matter. Okay. Right. Yeah. The effect of critting with a lightning weapon and doing the, was it like it's, one point it, of AOE damage? No, it's whatever you roll on your D6 damage yeah, gets yeah. Shot, shocked to one person. It's not worth the time to do the math. Yeah. Right. right. And that's the problem. And, and, you know, they they brought that game way in the heel because third edition was a disaster, right? It was just a mess with the pot. Yeah, Kaz is smiling here because he's, I love, I he's love one it. of the people <laughs> that <laughs> caused Pathfinder yeah. 2 to exist, okay? Kaz, did you make some broken ass shit? I uh, maybe. Tell it, us about your druid necromancy. My, <laughs> hey, listen, just because <laughs> I had a literal underground uh, labyrinth full. So yeah, everyone remembers the dread necromancy. Not a, probably not everyone remembers the Dread Necromancer. No, most people know that that was one of the most important right. classes and, in the game. Right, and yeah. then you could have uh, undead that you could res that would heal your undead, and then so you could sprinkle them in into your army, and it turned everything into just a catastrophe of dice is really what it turned into because and every combat... You, you could have stopped an army. Right. <laughs> this is, yeah. Like, this is third edition. It wasn't like sure. there was, like, action economy. 
yep. of, it was it was completely gone. Yeah, right. correct. Right. But I loved right. it. Right. Well, so and, that's why they made Pathfinder two to keep things in check, and it's a really balanced game, which is great. But when you try to, I, I think we somebody said it. We hit on something, and I think I think that's the truth. People want their decisions to matter. Correct. Right. And and the fiddliness gets in the way of my backstab means something. Right. I mean, you you really only make that calculation once. At, at the beginning well, no, of no, because the backstabber no, only stance. applies when you have when but, they're flat footed. Right. But so like, it's like you, you have well, to, and then it's like, oh, I did. It's like, I you know, I did ninety seven damage. Cool. Uh, ninety eight plus one. Ninety eight. Sure. And it's like. Dude, I rounded it up. Yeah, to you did the GM round it to a hundred. Remember, yeah, I, I remember every time uh, Derek would DM when we were getting into the yeah, or, the teams. Yeah, I do same thing. Exactly. You're just like I don't know. Why does my monster have three hundred ninety eight damage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
Oh. Because it's like, you know, everyone's supposed to basically be in different places and you're looking for uh, Alice. Is this game like a social commentary on like. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But maybe. that's the kind of stuff like you could start to do really cool things when you start to add digital tools. I just yeah, think but, it's sort of like a different game. But yeah, but what is that? I, I, I don't right. know. What is that, what is that right, game? It's a different game. It's, it's a different, different genre. genre. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. But I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just different. Yeah. Now, I, maybe sometimes I'd like that, but maybe not all the time. It, I don't it's, know. it's digitally augmented role playing. Right. Versus tabletop role playing I, versus. Like, in other words, if the math is so complex. This doesn't be that math. I, that, or, whatever. Something or, or, different. Or, or, yeah. If all the little options and mm. moving numbers and numerical bonuses, if there's so many of them and they're so omnipresent that you need a computer or you need a VTT in order to feel like you can appropriately manage them, then isn't by definition that too much for what the game is supposed to be? I mean, by I that definition, I, couldn't I, you say that? I don't path? think you. I think it's a video game at that point. You're playing a video game. Yeah, you're, you're, <sighs> but is it a video game if you still have a dungeon master? Well, there's video games where you have. I dungeon mean, masters. you could argue that you don't really need the, the Baldur's Gate three. Did, the Baldur's Gate three doesn't have a dungeon master. You the developers of the game were the dungeon masters, right? Yeah, yeah. you know, because hey, yeah. you know yeah. me, I I lose my. Hey, PF two. I get so mad at you. Sometimes. I get so <laughs> mad at you when we play Pathfinder two on Foundry because you're. You'll, I'll be like, Bob, you know, roll your die. And I'm like, oh, don't forget to add plus two because of the thing. And you'll go, oh, shit, I got I to gotta update my macro. And I'm like, dude, fuck your macro. Just roll the, just Once roll. I'm in that zone, like, it's hard to break. And it's like you you get locked into this. Like, yes. If I play on paper, you just tell me and I, I just do it. Right. But when I'm on the VTT, I like, I can't, like, I can't stop. You're like, no, the number on the <laughs> screen has to be the right number. I think it's we weird to separate two things here. Pathfinder 2 is not so complicated that it requires Foundry, okay? No. Pathfinder 2 is far less complicated than 4E or 3rd Edition. 3rd Edition, the math that you had to do with that every round with all the buffs and crap was insane. What's changed is we're older now and we don't care as much. Well, <laughs> yeah, I throw the D20. Is it greater than 12? I win. Correct. Right? right? In our 12? 20s, we would add up everything. <laughs> you know, but uh, Frost Jack says... I can't compute that. Fro Frost Jack says, I think Derek is going too hard on the math aspect. There are a lot of other reasons to use digital tools other than offloading complicated math. I agree. Now, I agree with that. Like, for example, um, like figuring out the area of effect of a spell. Yeah. But guess what? I don't give a shit about the area of effect of a spell anymore either. Exactly. Like, why is it... Why, why Derek it? wants to play on a Lazy Susan where it's close, yeah, this medium, This is just far. you being old and not wanting to do math, which I totally respect. Yeah, no, I mean, that's reasonable. Look, you do that's math reasonable. all day. Do you want to come home and do more math? Some, sometimes. <laughs> You're just playing the wrong game. That's right. okay. Um, the Purple GM. Uh, we had a bunch of Super Chat. Oh, man, came in a row. Uh, Purple GM said, my personal favorite example of a digital board game is um, Armello or Amello. I don't know that game. Ooh, it's very Armello. fun game. Oh, you, you know yeah, that. It's on okay. Steam. Yeah. Okay. Um, it is a, a video game, but it also functions exactly like a board game. It is so good. I don't know. Yeah, this tell game. us about it. Um, I've only played it a few times to be it, to be blunt, but it it's got sort of the same character set as like Root. So you take on like you're a fox or an owl or something along those lines, uh, and typically you have like a goal. Like your your character has a goal, um, and then you you progress. But it's a hex based map, and you progress through, uh, and you can pick things up as you go along. But they they will complicate mm. uh, the math because it might be like, oh, you the magic sword uh, allows you to exactly you know, allows you to kind of um, uh, you re-roll your attack if you miss by two or something along those lines. Yeah, you know, I just I think about people like we, Gloomhaven. We played Gloomhaven, mm -hmm. and a lot that of people, a game. lot of people are like, oh, I would never play that without the computer managing everything for me. It's not hard. I didn't think it was that, but I but I also think like. I, I know this lazy, sounds which is fine. Well, no, they are lazy, but I just think I think part of it is like part of the fun for me is doing the yeah, fiddling. Playing the game. Is sure. playing the game. I want to Jenga yeah. the the things. All or I'm you, saying or you just is play that game. <laughs> Fiddle or, the past. Or I'm saying if there are too many things to Jenga, then I just don't want to do exactly. that. Exactly. Um we had a couple of other super chats yeah. in here. Um Great Role Playing Debbie said, um, if something is digital and isn't quite a TTRPG, does it have to be a video game or is it something I think new? It's something, it could be something new. And I think it is probably something yeah, I think new. I mean, I, I, so I have some thoughts on this, right? Like in my mind, when Crimson says specifically RPGs, uh, there's probably like three areas, right? Uh, it's a spectrum. You have full analog, right? And this is like like how I like to play, how we often play, where like we don't even have uh, an ethos open archives uh, at our table. Correct. We, we don't right. use that, right? Right. Like, like we have actual books. And if I want to look up a spell, I, you know, I have a card or I have to go grab secrets of magic off the shelf and flip it open. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how we grew up playing this game. Right. right? We, we never use aids like that. Right. Then you have this hybrid model. And I, I don't think, I don't know if you've done this before, but I've done this with a fifth edition group uh, where 
everyone had iPads. We were still playing analog with like minis and stuff like that, or we might use the television set, mm-hmm. which was really just a pretty backdrop. Yeah, it doesn't do anything, right? Speeds up the drawing. I had people but using their phones. Yeah, at, yeah. yeah. I've had people in 5e use their phones yeah. as, as their character sheet, but yeah. rolling physical dice. They're using D&D Beyond on their iPad, yeah. on mm-hmm. their phone, but right. we're using real dice, but their character sheet and explanations are right there. So, yes. you know, my wife they goes to cast the spell really spell. quick. Yep. She clicks on the spell and goes, okay, it says I need to do blah, 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 right? Okay, so that's one style play. And then the last one is is virtual, yeah. right? Like full, right? Full on foundry, right. blah, 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 right? Um, I don't like foundry because I just like in-person games. Right, but for some people, it is not the reality. 100%. I, I mean, and, and I understand that right. and totally I fine mean, option. Case in point, right? This game, uh, this which we started the conversation with, uh, it's, it's, it calls itself a TTJ RPG. Yeah. Well, right? they're, and they're, obviously, they're playing around. Like obviously, it, they're yeah. playing around on it, right? Because we, you know, everyone grew up calling those things JRPGs yeah. um, because they came out of Japan. Um, but, you know, instead of calling it a TTRPG, it's a TTJ RPG. And so the idea is is there a future where we have the the TTRPG. I think oh, there absolutely. is. I think, I think they're they're where, where, where it is literally a role-playing game that could not be played yeah. in person. It could only be played in what you call the hybrid model, mm-hmm. where you have a digital yep. portal, or the fully virtual model. Yeah, and, I, I think and, so. And, the, and so what would that allow you to do that you can't do today? Well, I think what it would allow you to do is what MMOs allow us to do, right? Because when you get to a certain point, right, an MMO or a video game like Baldur's Gate 3, well, you, you had a good point, right? Well, where's the Game Master? Then? Well, that's a design decision because you can make these games like tools where a Game Master can come in and architect, right? right. Um, so let's pretend for a moment that if you're playing an MMO or you're playing you know, Baldur's Gate, that there's actually someone behind the scenes that's like setting up the fight and all that stuff, right? You know, uh, And then particularly when you factor in things like, like AI art and AI uh, voice. Like, I don't know if you guys have looked at the voice aspects of AI now. It's insane. You can take just if someone took a stream of Derek. Oh, they can. You could train a model on that, yep. and then make Derek say anything you want. It's going to be like ninety percent, especially because he's got 40. like hundred hours of voice. <laughs> oh, 40, in this case, it'd be uh, yeah. super easy. Forty yeah. K lore, as voiced by David Attenborough. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of Absolutely. things. Up there. Yep. I, I I love listening to like uh, Trump and Biden and uh, Obama oh, play like Fortnite. Or, yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious, right? It's I love it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine because you're just like. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous, yeah. right? But but you know there, there is a world where you can have that, and what can you do, right? Well, we talk about this all the time, right? And Vincent, Shah, he'll appreciate this, right? You know, a lot of us love the raid boss, right? Mm-hmm. The raid fight, and people who play raids typically the reason you like the raid is because it's not a typical trash fight. It's a fight that has mechanics, and the raid boss is doing crazy things, and they're big, and you gotta run around and doing all this stuff. My favorite's Final Fantasy, of course, when they where the arenas lighting up and you don't even know what's going on it's beautiful it's insane it's crazy set pieces impossible to do successfully in a ttrpg like derek and i van lots of people here have made these systems which makes tons of compromises to try to mimic this feeling of like stacking splitting running all these things you do in a raid right now you move to that hybrid model you move to that full video model where the gm is like you know using tools and ais and architecting to set up these complex video games which are exploding players can play in real time like that's the sort of environment you can start to build where the gm is guiding these advanced kind of gameplay things and it is a video game just one kind directed by a human right so i was gonna say so imagine a world and we got a couple super chats i do want to get to uh vin uh, let me know if you need me go scroll around vin did say uh condition durations aren't math but they're hard he's giving an example of things where it's like so we were talking about this is actually an example i gave pathfinder 2 i said some things last one round some things last one minute some things last five minutes. Some things last ten minutes. Some things last forever. Battle, like I was yeah. like, I was like, guidance. I hate, if you, if, I hate guidance. If you cast guidance on somebody, you can't. They can't. They can't be guidanced by anybody for an hour. If I be, if I battlefield medicine somebody, that person can't be battlefield medicine by me mm-hmm. for twenty four hours. Right. But they could be battlefield so medicine so by someone else. And so you get into these weird situations where you're like, can I bet? Wait, who did I battlefield medicine? Was that you or him? No, that was a guidance. When was that? Within 50 minutes ago, that was an hour. Well, what about that other thing? Oh, that only lasts five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, you know, again, that those aren't necessarily math things. It's just things that you have to manage. Yeah. And um, uh, so, you know, time I, tracking is important for any Malu. Yeah, to very, very important for any Malu. Um, Rick Sherman said, for Traveler, I just build macros in my VTT so my players don't need to worry about the math. It's visible if they want to see it, but it lets them concentrate on the story tech. Yeah. Great. But 
you know, you're obviously a kind of person, Rick, who's willing to both build macros and has the ability to build macros. And there's a lot of people who don't necessarily want to become a JavaScript programmer just to be able to play a role playing. game. I think those things are getting easier with time. They're going to be more accessible. I agree. Sure. But, you, you know, um, uh, <laughs> a great role playing. Debbie says the spell streams, no voice for his, but for many hours I could make an immaculate AI with that. Your identity is not safe <laughs> because of all You're the spell. Oh, yeah. Cause he's basically saying hundreds It'd be of, trivial. He's like yeah. more like thousands of thousands hours. Of hours. Yeah. Um, but I guess the question is if there was a world where you could take a really cutting edge MMO, mm -hmm. but behind the scenes was either a GM or an extremely advanced ai mm -hmm. that could literally procedurally generate a world so quickly that it would you you know oh, you so could, it's almost like playing a sandbox a complete sandbox yeah, i mean that kind of sounds pretty cool <laughs> like but it's but it's a video game it's an mmo obviously it would have you know like you know it's you have a hot bar you know what i mean, I mean it's, yeah. it's a video game what's it, uh what's the ai would is program? that a, the dungeon Alchem alchemist oh, dungeon alchemist yeah i mean that's me doing it i'm sure a computer could do it we're very, very fast. We're, we're <laughs> maybe two years off. Right. From, Is that yeah. a game that you want to play? I mean, if your decisions mattered in the game and then the world started building itself because of the decisions you did and your game is different than someone else's game, that sounds pretty interesting. I, I yeah, I mean, like, they can you, really got to control. You this. go back to cool. like Diablo 2 with the procedurally generated maps. Even. Right. So anytime you reloaded the game, the Just world you were yeah. in was different. No mm -hmm. Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is another perfect, another great example, right? I, I I personally think that that would be an in person role playing game brilliant session. It's still a video game, but like we're all sitting around maybe a uh, a tablet or a TV screen, or we're doing uh you know uh, split screen couch co op, or which I think would be even cooler. Just that might as well yeah. we're going down the sci fi route. Uh, augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Right, because yep. we're already seeing augmented reality DM uh, stuff. So let wait. Oh, wait no, 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 no. So let, let, let me ask you. Let me let me let me let me broaden this question. We're all, nerd, we're all nerds here. <laughs> right. We're all nerds here. Except Bob it won't get this. Uh, you don't know. We got to test this out. All right. It's the 24th century. <laughs> okay. You're serving aboard. The USS Enterprise. Okay, I'm not going oh, to get okay. this. Why can't we go on a Nebula class? Okay. Just look at some boring moons. Okay, fine, <laughs> fine, fine. You're on a Nebula. You're on an Oberth class starship, oh, geez, exploring, exploring, <laughs> exploring gaseous anomalies um, in the uh, in the whatever Quazon sector. Perfect. Okay, you have a holodeck. Would you be playing? And I know, and I bring this up because there's a show that I don't watch. Like I just like playing holodeck D and D. Uh, okay, um, there's a there's a show that I don't watch where I understand that they did something like this. You have a holodeck on this ship. Would you and your lower deck crewmates get together and play role playing games? Hundred percent. Oh, without a doubt, yes. Yeah. And, and remember, yes. even though you have access to a holodeck. That you could go into. Oh, and I thought like, we were playing on the holodeck. Sorry. No, no, oh, no, wait, no, no. Wait, wait. Oh, oh. I mean, yeah, you might go into the holodeck to like have a really sweet, cool castle well, library. Say, holodecks are, are are like they're, they're programmed. So like Kaz could make a campaign that we play on the holodeck. Exactly. No, no. But what I'm saying though is like, would you want to play D and D? Yeah, like actual paper D and D. Paper D and D. Yeah. If you had access to a holodeck with what? the kind of comp computational power that those starships have. I mean, you're you're you're, you're almost talking. Uh, I'm, I'm, Thinking about an anime called Sword Art on uh, Sword Art, Sword where they get stuck in the game. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a good anime. Um, would I would I be a barbarian on the holodeck? So so basically, any TNG episode where they got on the holodeck and they acted out Shakespeare, Shakespeare, because it was you Patrick are, Stone, or whatever. But, I mean, I guess what I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm just trying to say like would would there be a world where Ooh. you would want to get together with you know paper and pencil and dice I mean, and, be, and books. like your barbarian is you know, uh, your sheet of paper as opposed to being you the barbarian, being the barbarian yeah, I, in the house. I want to be the barbarian. Or, or even, <laughs> really, Bob, really, Bob. Bob's like, can I, I hit something I with I an axe? Do both. I think I would do both. I, Mark, I don't know if I would do, I don't Mark, know if I would do paper. By, Mark, by the way, well, says. because sometimes I get tired, I just want to sit down. And if yeah. you're on a holiday, you actually have to run around. Okay. Uh, also, okay. like, yeah. it's Star Trek. So one out of five of these things, the safeties are going to come off, and, like, right. you're going to actually kill someone right. with your axe. Right. Okay. And well, the orcs are going to invade the ship. So. <laughs> but, you know, and I was just using that as a metaphor to basically no, be I like, just like because you're right. In that case, you're right. You're actually having to physically run around, and it's like a, more like a LARP. Which is still a which is still different though than the idea of I'm sitting in my computer chair, right. I'm at home, yeah. I've got my interface, right. I've got all my 
hot, which by the way, I'm starting to describe you're like, is he talking about foundry? Because that's the way a lot of foundry people has a hot bar. A foundry has a hot bar. Have macros. Um, and so yeah, it's like um, you know, it, it's one of those situations. By the way, Mark said, lol, using the holodeck to bring in your perfect gaming table. That's the ultimate nerd. <laughs> yes. 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 Um paper D on the holodeck. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Damian Williams with five dollars says Derek just says he does not watch lower decks. Shameful. It is shameful. I have not watched, you haven't watched Star either. Trek since uh like season one or two of Enterprise because I thought it was terrible. Watch Strange New Worlds. And I stopped watching it. And then number two, I don't own basically a television. I don't own any streaming uh, service. You just don't like you a have a computer. I don't, I don't, what, I, what I will do for you is, I because I know you want to avoid, I will send you a site so that you can avoid streaming Strange New Worlds. Uh, but to, to as Aaron said, 100% need to watch Strange New Worlds. You'll like it. You, you will, will like you it. will, I promise you, even you will like this show. That is a, that is a tall order. Um, <laughs> I don't make that comment like that. Uh, All right. Arguably one of the best TV shows that has been put out in the last five years. That's the one with Pike. Yeah. Yes. Right. You know, when it's you say phenomenal. the best TV show, you're talking about Star Trek TV nope. shows? No, best TV All show. genres. Like, what if you just don't like Star Trek? Doesn't matter. Oh, the just writing still, is that oh, good. Okay. Okay. That's so, so real, real story here. My wife, you guys know this. Could you she, watch it without knowing anything about Star Trek? Yes. Okay. She, my wife is a hardcore Star Wars nerd to the point where Star Wars good, Star Trek bad. Mm -hmm. Right. Like she's like those Star Trek, them the real nerds. Right. And I don't know how I conned her into watching Strange New Worlds. Fucking loves it. Interesting. Loves it. The writing. What is streaming services is it on? Paramount. Park. Paramounts, yes. Uh, I don't know if I have that yeah. one. I'll send you a website to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shadiest dealer. <laughs> we are live. Um, yeah. TV platforms. Um, Purple GM with the super chat says, compare a TTRPG to an album. I'd say some people like to deconstruct it privately, while others want to go to a concert to experience it. That's why BG3's success will translate to larger D&D, &D, in my opinion. Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Is the are the people who are really you know I I, I understand it's like one of the top selling games of all time. Oh, it's really oh, yeah. fun. It's okay. real fun. Yeah. Um, yes, he did say it's a, a site to avoid, Vin. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, it, it's obviously done extremely well. Are the people who are playing BG three gonna go? Man, that was awesome! Nope. I can't wait to sit around a table with papers no. and pencils and uh, dice. I can tell you that right now. My brother and my cousin are both playing with us. Yes, and none of them want to play D anD. D <laughs> They are um, playing to play the video game. Counterpoint, I think a lot of people watched the show Arcane and then the the anime on Netflix. Vox Machina? No, no, no. no Arcane, oh, Arcane, the one from um, um, like League uh, of Legends or League whatever. Of Legends, oh, and then yeah. went to play League of Legends. Now they did. There was two now, things right. So the the no, 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 but the so difference, the D &D. difference is they watched Arcane. And they were like, wow, look at this exciting, right. fast-paced show. Yeah. I'm going to go play this exciting, fast-paced game. <laughs> that is not the case. <laughs> that is not the case with D&D. &D. True. True. Um, I, 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 you know, I have to make a counterpoint to Kaz here because uh, I'm actually going to have to agree with Bob. Uh, my wife does not like 5th edition, but she does like Boulder's Gate. I mean, like my brother's really playing with me, and never once but he was like, "Me will be like D and D soon." He's more like, "I just want to level up and get that new feat in my right. in my character, and then we're gonna explore this area." He has right. he's no like, desire he, to play he's D and D. Like, he's like, "We'll never play that. We'll never yeah. play D and D again." He's like, we can play this for it's only sixty bucks. And you can play forever. There's the game's there. There's it's, a ton of replayability. Yeah. Um, great role playing, Debbie. Said I want to play both AI uh, AI Super BG three and OSE table game. What is a TTRPG? <laughs> what is it? What is it, man? I don't know. All I know is I'm having fun. Sword Art is fucking great. Yeah. Fight me. <laughs> SAO is really good. There you go. My Art. wife um, actually liked that. I mean, she hates anime. You know, I, 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 I know he was being kind of flippant, um, but uh, great role playing. Debbie kind of has an interesting point, which is kind of maybe kind of where I'm going to. Like, if I want that super fiddly, crunchy game, part of me starts to go, yeah, maybe I should just be playing this on a video game. Whereas, but then is it still crunchy and fiddly at that point? Because all the crunchy and fiddliness is handled. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't, so there's yeah, like no, Final Fantasy. Right? I don't, yeah, I don't know. So much is going on. I, I Billy's got all these things on it. There's potency. They're, they're like I, I, none of that matters. Your you know what matters? Skill My rotation. What buttons am I going to yeah. push? Right. So it's extremely math heavy and fiddly. Except it's not because the game just pushes all that and aside for you. And now just listen to some awesome music as this dude explodes into a dragon. Right. So yeah, that's my know. point from way back. If you are into the fiddly, 
you probably actually want the fiddly. And if you don't want the fiddly, you should go play something else. So then are all the people playing Pathfinder 2 on Foundry because they like all the fiddly, they're really doing themselves a disservice by having all these macro modules that do all the counting for them? I mean, listen, however they want to play, it's up to them. But I do think there's like, a little discrepancy there, right? Right. Like, should they just be playing and then they just use like a dice roller and roll a D20, like, you know, raw D20, and then go, and I'm going to add three from that, four from that, five from that manually in my head I, and come up with a number that's 27. That. Or are they playing on Foundry because they're they're dealing with the fiddliness, but they still like the... the that's what, well, that's no, what yeah. They're they're doing. Doing. I mean, that's, that's what they're doing. That's what they're yeah. doing. People want to have their... like People want to lie to themselves. Like, that's why I play on the Foundry. Okay. Yeah. they want like, I could do this. <laughs> yeah. They want to lie to themselves and be like, oh, I love making all these choices and I love these all these numbers. And you're like, I don't want to ever actually deal with any of these numbers, though. I mean, I like leveling up my character. And there's a lot of that. I could take my time on that one. Okay. Do you actually level your character, or do you use Foundry or use Foundry. Path Builder? Yeah. <laughs> and Path Builder. But, but to be clear, though. Like, but I get to make those choices. Well, no, but look it, through the list. You uh, want to make the choices. You don't want, you know. Then I'll, then I'll let the game sort of help me do the math. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, someone did say something, which is somewhat truth. Which was like, I don't mind doing the math once. You know, right. like at level up, I don't think that's you know horribly. Yeah, bad. Um, Damian Williams. I hate your racing. Star really. Trek, Star Trek, uh, Strange New World. I, oh, sorry, is arguably the best Star Trek show, and I'm a huge fanboy. That you know, better than Deep Space Nine? Better than Deep Space Nine? I mean, it's in season two. It's in season two, better so than it's, it's hard to say. You guys, well, are, everyone knows I'll, shows can go. I'll to say the shit. season one, season two is better than season one, season two of DS Nine. That is TG. not that is, that's not a high that's not a high hurdle <laughs> to carry. So if I were to compare, it is. <laughs> if I were to compare my most favorite DS Nine episode, which is in the in the pale, pale, in the pale moonlight, moonlight. <laughs> uh, and my current, <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's in the pale I might moonlight. Link that like fifty times a week, um, and my my personal mo uh, favorite episode so far in Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds, which is Doctor Mobob's like. Uh, Mugabe's, excuse me, uh, basically background episode. Yeah, where they explain like why everyone calls him the assassin. And Tone all wise, they're very similar. Episodes. Very similar episodes, yeah. right? Um, the Star Trek Strange New Worlds one is probably better than In the Pale Moonlight, and that's that is I, a heavy lift. I feel like, I feel like TNG and DS Nine suffer from the limitations of their time. And that Strange New Worlds sure. has more ability yeah. to tell the story that they wanted to tell. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, that's reasonable. And what I love about Strange New Worlds is it's really back to that old school tech or old school trek where they are taking complex and challenging social issues that we are experiencing in our lifetime, making it something that's entertaining while exploring the topic. And not and not necessarily that with, with a a a you know. And this is the right answer. Just yeah. simply, let's explore this topic. Let's look at both sides and let's have an entertaining show with it. And for me, that was Star Trek. You know, like, like, uh, um, uh, what was the episode of The Lawyers? Uh, Measure of a Man and TNG. Oh, yeah. With data being with data. Yeah. Yeah. Being, is, is, data is he, on, is, yeah. he a, is he a property or is he yeah. a person? Yes. Like, like there are so many examples of that type of show in, in Strange World. I mean, they went back to at Aspera. Yeah. yeah. They went right back. At Aspera. Is, that one might be my favorite. It's hard. Yeah. At Aspera I, I, was I such an amazing it. episode. It was. Because what I love about it, we talked about this at length, but like what I love about that episode was there was no right answer. No. But what they did was the right way. Right. Like you, you leave that episode going. Okay, uh, Starfleet and, and the Federation have a lot to learn, but they took the step. It was a hopeful step, right? Going all the way back to like Gene Roddenberry, like this is a hopeful future. The utopia, right? Which is what some of the modern Trek lost. Hundred percent. In fact, I mean, as much as I love Deep Space Nine, and as much as I love DS Nine, started the trend in the pale moonlight, right? Oh, it, it is fundamentally showing a Starfleet officer compromising the very principles right. of the Federation, right? In order to win, yes. he lost hope. And that was the one thing was like, this is a hopeful future. No matter how tough the, the struggles are, this is a hopeful future where mankind will prevail because of hope. And this show gets back into that. And I love it. Yep. It's, yeah. Um, we went way off. We, 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 we only it, actually had one question. It only turned into a Star Trek thing. <laughs> uh, Purple GM says, I, uh, I meant won't translate big mistake there. Uh, ha -ha. So, yes, Purple GM actually meant the opposite of what he said earlier. And uh, Vin says, Baldur's Gate is the real 5E, I think he said. Lots, um, uh, it, no, Baldur's Gate is the real 5? Five? 5E. 
Oh, it's the real 5.5e. Mm. Lots oh, of tweaks. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay, so that's that's what that's what fifth edition is. Now. Yeah, there's a, there's like no. a lot of changes they made to the BG is, is a set. very tactical game. Yeah. Yeah. So since so since we're so far off topic. <laughs> Unless you guys bring I mean, us back on by me. asking another question. Uh, so thank you for all your tips. We probably won't be answering <laughs> any of your questions. Um, if you ask the questions? question in the chat, we... It's, Tip again, and we'll try to get to it. No, we got to all the, well, we got we all all the tips. tips. Yeah. All the tips, but if someone asked the question in the chat, we missed it. But what I wanted to start with is... Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> Derek just really wants to play this. Uh, no, no but, but we were talking about fiddliness. Yes. And then Bob started talking about how he's like, <laughs> fiddly. And then, I but, mean, but, penis. Yeah, penis. But the thing I wanted to point out is, in a classic JRPG style, um, and this is even something from 5th edition, mm -hmm. which we really liked. Mm -hmm. In this game, there's like, I don't know, eight damage types, right? Mm -hmm. Fire, ice, lightning, dark, light. Yep. Yep. A creature can have immunity to it. They have resist, or, and your PC. And vulnerability to it. Can have resistance to it, mm -hmm. nothing, or vulnerability to it. Mm -hmm. Immunity means you take zero. Resistance means you take half. That's five. Mm. Vulnerable means you take double. Okay. So yeah. if that you're that's super it, nice. So man. if you have a 35 damage lightning bolt spell and you target some creature that's like a machine or construct and it has yeah, vulnerable light, they take 70. So is that fiddly? Yes. You're oh, what damage type is he? What vulnerable? Yeah, but it's but the, you're doubling. Yeah. You're doubling the damage. That's, that's an easy math. I, that, that, yeah, I was gonna say that, well, that, that to me goes, is easy math. That's why I go back half, to four E. Zero full or double is very easy math. <laughs> People only complain about yep. the fiddliness if their impact is low. Why are we dealing with backstabber? If you're okay, that's doubling fair. your lightning bolt damage, that's... no one's going to sit and go, this is so fiddly. I hate right. doing so much. I just did so much damage and it was so lame. No one's doing that. Not fair, but I mean. And, and it's a dramatically impactful decision yeah. that you've made. Like to it's give someone cool. vulnerability or to get resistance. Again, I think double half and zero yeah. are very easy 5e e did very good job add that. but that's why advantage was so good a bunch of different dice plus plus or minus things that aren't in the dice pool like that's right. to break my cpu like like like, like <laughs> i, I want to clarify something because a lot of people dog on advantage it's not that advantage and disadvantage was bad it's that that was used like 90 percent of the time in the game like the the mechanic itself was was brilliant yeah oh, well love, but I you just it, threw actually, advantage yeah. or disadvantage at everything and mm -hmm. it, it you, well, yeah, one yeah. could throw disadvantage. It saturated the rule set right. with it. But like when you're rolling with advantage, you feel awesome. Yeah. And when you're rolling with disadvantage, you're like, oh man, it's hopeless. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, it not only is it an efficient mechanic and a powerful mechanic, it feels good and right. feeling tactile. We talk about this all the time yeah. in a role play game. It's so important. And we've talked about this. I've talked about this with Mark Seifter on the show, where I get it. I've done the math, I've seen the numbers, I've done the crunching myself. Plus one, a plus two is a very big bonus right. in Pathfinder 2. Right. Yes. Huge difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the difference between the fighter and all the other classes. And, you know, I mean, that is plus two. But it's it doesn't it doesn't feel as good. And I get it. I mean, oh, dude, Probably because uh, we played uh, D20. Ro rolling yeah. an advantage is for, for 5.5. I know. I know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is adding two doesn't feel as good right. as like rolling roll twice, rolling twice, take the higher roll or whatever like that. It just does. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I know that two d twenty take the higher is better mechanically, but I'm just saying it, it is. And it, likewise, like like the the temp HP thing uh, for your your barbarian Pathfinder two Bob versus your barbarian five E, where it's just like, oh, you're raging half off. Uh, that is by far so cool. Yeah, well, it's and, cool. I mean, it's I, impactful and it's easy. Well, so, I just felt like every time I went to battle, like I felt so cool. Right. Like, you felt like, like your I hit you character. for ten damage. And I'm like. Five. Right. Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> talking about fiddly. <laughs> 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 you both made the, you you both made the same joke. Um, and 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 so one of the things that I think is really interesting, it, you know, we just talked about that is like, um, I think there's like a a spell in this game that gives everybody in your party till the end of the scene, um, you know, resistance to an energy type. Amazing. Right. And so suddenly everyone is, you know, oh, you're fighting the fire dragon and it's breathing its fire breath. And he's like 30 damage, and you're like 15. Oh, it's so uh, You're like good. 40 damage, right. 20. And that's to everybody. That feels great. And yeah. same thing with the vulnerable, right? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, the the kind of white mage casts a spell that turns all of your energies into like light damage. What dice right? system does that use? It uses a D6, D8, D10, and D12. Oh, that's be I, I, no D4 need to, no D20. That's weird with no D4, but yeah, no, I I'm love okay it. With, actually, I'm okay actually, I'm okay without, without the, D20. the D4. I'm okay um, without the D20. But, I mean, that's, but my point is, D12 is also just a great dice. My <laughs> point is, though, it's like yes, in Path, Pathfinder Two, there's weakness and vulnerability. It's like, oh, you you did the cool thing. You brought that. 
cool. All right, the dragon does 56 fire damage, but because you took resist energy, you only take 51 damage. Right, and see, people go, that's fiddly, and I think it has more to do with the impact than it does with the mechanic. I agreed. It's now, not- the mechanic is also fiddly because you're doing math versus half. And I understand, yes, both are math, but having something or doubling something is just easier than I'm going to take off seven yeah. from this attack. Yeah. I'm taking seven off of 52. Right. Right. Well, and it's always half and always double. Right. Which is always impactful. Right. Rather than two or three. Or, right. Yeah. Right. Um, and self confessed Cynic agrees. Advantage is great. They just really overused it. Yep. And I completely agree saying. with that. Yep. Yeah. hundred percent. Purple GM says, uh, can't I like a complex game that controls smoothly uh, versus or can it only enjoy a complex game if the controls are equally complex? Sounds like gatekeeping similar of fighting games and modern controls. So in other words, um, if a game is complex, does it need to be hard to manage? You know? Like, it, it, well, this is the difference. You're, you're using the terms complex. Yeah. But it, this is the difference between complex and complicated. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's a subtle difference between the two of those. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, to me, a complex game can be a really rewarding and rich thing. Right. Right. Because, in fact, I would argue that the price that you pay for a complex game is usually complication. Right. Which I view to be a downside. Correct. And that, yeah, I think you're on this, right? Right. Like, complication is bad. It's just bad. Complex can be very rewarding. Yeah. Like you, you could, I, and maybe I'm thinking about this a little too hard. You could argue in some ways that like L5R is a complex game. It is. But it is not very complicated. Like you have, Three yeah. outcomes on your uh, I mean, four outcomes on your dice. To be fair, I can understand L five R. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. We so did. I you can I was doing things that I was Bob's supposed to the do. Most complicated character, right. by far. And I'm oh yeah doing things right, right. <laughs> so like it's uh, a, uh, you you're casting your spells better than you did with twenty levels of your Pathfinder sorcery. That's because you kind of never got deadly sorcery. Right. <laughs> right. So that's the thing, right? So you felt yeah. like your sorcerer harder. was getting more complicated. Yes. Right. 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 Um, and so I think that's really, you know. Yeah. I know we missed a, a, a super chat from Great Role Playing. What, what, what we got? I don't know. It, it's, 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 down. Oh, it's down. It's down. I don't know. Can you scroll down from this? No. Yeah, I don't know. He, uh, They said something. It's below the purple gems and below Vin's comment. Okay, okay. Great Role Playing. Debbie said, uh, nothing is as fun as I roll a one and a 20. I, I disagree. <laughs> um. Right there. I was super chatting with oh, Roll okay. for Combat. Okay, Bob, read it for us. Uh, I was super chatting with Roll for Combat and asked, uh, does the BG make uh, D&D's VTT job harder. There are for sure mod modders Mod. turning BG three into a VTT. Got it. In other words, is is Baldur's oh, Gate three oh, right? And and you know what, Smith, it, it reminds me of uh, you know, uh, scroll all the way to the top, Smith. We're good. Um, yep, yeah, we, we got that. We one. got that. Yeah, one. we got that one. Um, it reminds me back when uh, Neverwinter Nights came out, and you basically were trying to turn it into like a pseudo procedural oh, generated i made a fully automated one through 20 campaign in that and yeah. so 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 not only was that was, a lot it, of work. was it like was it lua was that what it was it wasn't scripted? lua it, it was scripted it, in lua it, it, i don't remember what it was i don't remember what it was i don't think it was lua. but you went hard with neverwinter nights yeah. modding yeah and you were basically like this awesome platform came out and there weren't really vtt's at the time no not at all and so you were basically like oh, this is kind of sweet like i'm gonna turn this into kind of my vtt so so what i did is i, I did all that Right. And then I would join my own server as a player, but only with player powers. And I wouldn't mention that I was the GM. <laughs> and oh. I would play with other players. Uh -huh. You know, and it was kind of like, you know, right. I wouldn't spoil things. Sure. Right? But like, I'd almost kind of like player GM. You've heard of GM PCs. <laughs> like, I was more of a PC GM <laughs> where like, if they were getting a little stuck. You know, I might help them out a little sure. bit, and then like, oh, I should make. It I've heard player. a rumor <laughs> that uh, you had left. Right. That's it's, cool. It's, it's obviously so much a fun. trap. It's no, obviously a trap. There. So much fun. Um, Archon apparently I got their super chat eight. Well, Archon, let us know what you said, and I will make sure to uh, to 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 call you out there and shout you out there. Uh, Unfortunate Pumpkin says the reason I love Fabula Ultima and Thirteenth Age, another good game, great game, uh, is because combat can still be tactical without getting bogged down by fiddly mechanics or things like measurement. And I think this is a really important point. That's the kind because, of stuff I like because what I've come to the real you would love Thirteenth Age. What I've come to the realization I mean, is I guarantee I like you know I like games where there's things I need to manage my my pool of resources, mm -hmm. um, right. uh, maybe a set of conditions or statuses. 
But when I cross multiply that with like Euclidean geometry, <laughs> right? No, I know exactly and what it is for you. Radial bursts. I'm like, think about I, what you just said. Here's your issue. You like resources, pools, right? Like, like you want to make choices. Yes. But the math that you're doing in Pathfinder isn't this meaningful choice. That's why you're frustrated with. Sure. It. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, um, yeah, like I would be more happy with, uh, you know, only having two or three choices. Right. That were really impactful. Right. Right. Like, and you can only do one. And you can, you got to pick one, you know, maybe it lasts for this round or whatever. Like, you're like, um, you know, like Legend of the Five Rings, I love, like, you go, there's five stances. Yeah. Yeah. And that and, is a hard choice. And it each is. one has certain advantages and disadvantages. You were getting crit to shit the yep. last time we played. And yep. had you been in Earth stance, right. you would not have been getting fine. crit. But I had my own advantages, though. Right. But at the same time, fire stance could be very, very beneficial for getting a lot of extra bonus successes. Mm. My Ojimbo was always in fire stance. Right. But, but it, I had to be in void or water sometimes because I had to do certain things. Well, right. your situation is even a little bit different, Rabat, yeah. because in order to cast water spells, you, you need to be in the water, water stance. stance. Correct. So the moment you choose to go into a stance, you're basically saying, I'm, I'm locking myself right. out it of these is. other I really spells. I to know what's going on in the scenario and what yeah. I plan to do that turn. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, the fact those that those are powerful choices, right? Oh, powerful and, choices. And, every, right. and everything I did during that game, like our our combat, was like awesome. Well, Even let's talk about that combat role for playing a boss fight that we had, which was in combat, the, was the, also yeah, intense. The tea ceremony. So, 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 so oh. this was this was like um, our fourth I mean, or I fifth liked, session. I liked watching Cass play uh, not real go. Right, he played he played virtual. Oh yeah, a Legend of the Five Rings. And I was go. into it, and you yeah. were you were like you're like oh man. <laughs> Oh, he, then, you're like you're like, but if he takes him here, he will shame him, man. <laughs> and he could he, he could might get he might get because called out. Everything's and right. very important. Right. There's so many things that are like re yes. relying on things. I was even in the scene, and I'm like, everything's I'm like, we impactful. We need him to do this. Like, there's a lot riding on this. Right. No, I want to talk about that. Right. Yeah. So, so this is the combat that was our fifth session of L5R, fifth or sixth, yeah, Something yeah. like that, fifth maybe. And this was our first fight. Yes. Right. We have not fought. That was our only first and only fight. Right. And, and you know, like. Oh, you mean the, 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 when, the when the crane fight. just attacked you? Yeah, when they jumped us. at the end of the last session. Yeah, they yeah, that's. Right. I think that it was, was our first fight. I think it was the fifth session. End of the fifth session. It was the very first time you guys have right. been involved in a physical altercation. Right. And I remember you know, I've been playing this game since these games since I was twelve, right? And like I can't remember the last time this happened where like this fight started. My hands were actually like I was like into it. Oh, it was, was ridiculous. Like, oh yeah, you were shaking. I was you shaking. were nervous. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, and I was nervous. I get chills thinking about it, right uh, because. In this game, so much was on the line, right? Like, not not even like, oh, I can absolutely die here, because in L5R, you can absolutely die in any fight. Right. A samurai is always three feet from death. <laughs> yes, and it's so true in this game, right? But also, it wasn't enough that I could die. It was also like, well, I got to make sure if I do die, I die the right way. The right yes. way, yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, I don't want to die, and I want to make sure I protect my allies. You know, and also, this guy just disgraced us and, like, our honor. Yeah, honor's on the line. Right, you know, and Derek <laughs> was even surprised, right? Because, like, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know why. You talk shit, you get hit. But, like, <laughs> Derek showed up. Yeah, he's like, you're a coward. You're, you're like, a no, coward. No, 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 you know what? You know what? No, actually, can I be honest with you? Here's why. You responded. Number one, I believe you responded exactly the way that a samurai should oh, respond. Sure. Yes. Okay. But number two, I think you definitely responded the way that a lion exactly. samurai should okay. respond. But the, most, the thing is, up until that point, I don't want to say you've been playing it safe. But, like, you know, you guys were kind of trying to be, like, we were trying to be better the than the uh, like better than the honor system in a strange way, right? Mm. Like a big part of being a lion samurai is that sense of pride. Yeah, honor is your primary bushido code mm. tenant, right? Mayo, and so I was kind of like, all right, you know, I just threw this down. Is he going to try to defuse this situation, or is he going right. to act like a fucking lion? This is example, and you did <laughs> of role playing, right? Because. <laughs> I am a person that likes to diffuse things. Mm -hmm. Right. You, yes. I, I, I will I mean, be except when you're, I Except to. when you're cutting the throats of your fellow party members. <laughs> sure. Wait, of your fellow party members? Oh, you didn't hear oh, about yes. this. You didn't watch Roots. Is this the one that I missed? This is, this is, this is, oh, this is Tuesday's Roots. Spoiler sorry. alert. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite the episode. I heard about the kid thing. Oh, that, that was, was episode, episode four. four. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one I know. Episode three was me being a psychopath this time. Oh. It's yeah. infectious. I well, it might have been Smith whispering in my ear from across right. the table, like, "Do it, do it." <laughs> so I the player <laughs> Smith was being an asshole, but the character Smith uh, actually was, ended up being like a hero that session by did. killing your. Oh he, no, 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 no! Uh, it, right now the knife's at my throat. Right? Oh, then, oh, that spoiler oh, alert! Oh, sorry. Spoiler. Yeah. yeah, dang it! We ended on a cliffhanger. We ended on a cliffhanger. cliffhanger. Oh, okay. please watch okay. the last episode. Yeah, I will do that. Um, 
Uh, Unfortunate Pumpkin with his other super chat says, 100% agree here. Making choices that matter is my favorite thing to do in gaming. Yeah. And so many of the choices in PF2 just That's don't matter. And, 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 and like when people talk about like this is the best game ever, D D, whatever it is, it's because they have a moment like we had, like whether it's PBTA, right? Any of the games we play PBTA, whether it's the Alpha of our session, whether it's the combat or Go, you know, right. and, where we're sitting there and we're like, right now, we have no idea. The game master has no idea what's going to happen. It could be bad. It could be amazing. And and Kaz is going to roll these dice. And whatever happens is going to change us forever. And there's no take backs. Right. That is addicting. Right. That's when we way back in the day when we talk about gambling, you know, and like, you know, Derek's a big like like Vegas gambler. But I was always bored with it because like I like to gamble with like like my life. Your life. <laughs> yeah, I was going like, to say, dude, I, gonna, dude, right? I want this you to know? matter. Right. Right. Oh, and this, this is why games like basic were so much fun because everything matters at risk. Right. And that's the struggle I think we have with some of these modern games is where when you can like do the math in your head and they're going to do this all the time and you look at this fight and you're like, statistically, there's no reasonable way we're ever going to die in this fight. It's possible through a fluke of horrible dice rolls that we could die. But it's not going to happen. And that just feels bad. Well, because now, now you know what you're doing. You're pushing right. buttons. You're doing a rotation. You're right. going through the the motions of it. And I'm not saying that can't be an enjoyable experience. Because at the end of the day, because right. right. I'm throwing you, fireballs and hanging out bomb. What you just described is also fourth edition. Yeah, right. Fourth edition was designed. They tell you this in the designer yeah. notes. You shouldn't be dying in fourth edition. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, Flat I mean, out. and if and if, in case there was any doubt that you shouldn't be dying in fourth edition, by the time you get to the high enough levels of the game where you might. Meant be able to die. Right. It triggers your powers. You're, you have powers that trigger one when you die. Instead, you come back as like a shining comet of light that erupts in silvery fire, yeah. which detonates, killing all your enemies, healing all your allies, right. and then you reconstitute in a glowing form. Right. Then, and then at the end of the encounter, the glow dis dissipates, and you're just back to normal. You're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> One, once per encounter. But yeah, yeah, like, but, yeah. No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, once a day. You guys, oh, sorry. Once sorry. A, you can only once do that day. once a day. You got to go take a nap before you can do that again. Gosh. Wow. Right? Um, but yeah, and, those moments are so exciting. Right. And that's and, why we come back to the table, right? Yes. Not um, to pick our next fucking feet. Right. Well, but the, again, I think I don't mind, you know, picking. Uh, that's fine. It's it's just yeah. not the, the main drive. Yeah. You know? Right. I agree. Well, it, it's like, I it goes back to that World of Warcraft. When I gained a talent point and I gained that level, my hit points ticked up a little bit, whatever. And then I'd be like, cool, critical, critical specialization plus one more percent critical hit. Right. It, I get it. Mathematically, it was like the strongest move. I think that's sweet. <laughs> you like numbers go for <laughs> I kind of do. Numbers go uh, <laughs> In fact, one of my downsides on, in WoW is I would almost always pick whatever a thing gave me new things to put on my hot bar. I feel like I would always pick like, oh, that that's a new ability. Mainly as I got older, I only put took passives because there's too many buttons for me. To push. Well, well, I, can I? Sorry. Yeah, no, no, please. No, no, no. I was gonna say I I feel like any game, uh, where there are there's too many f fiddly elements, uh, to it, actually raises the bar of entry for players for new players sure. because if it takes it, I'm pro I'm. Uh, this is going to be a super hot take. I hate making Pathfinder 2 characters. I, I, leveling, up is like, <laughs> leveling up is good and because, paper because is awful. Because I know up. that like I, there's there's all of these options, but like there's a right option. And so if if I'm playing Pathfinder 2 or Path of Exile, and if I have to go online and look up a build guide, I'm immediately oh, bored. PF2, you really, PF2 you, is a little bit better. A little, but but the, here's my point. There's like two bad choices you can make. Here's my point, yeah. and, and Derek will probably One, like not this. being a fighter. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's your hot take. Uh, <laughs> when Derek pulled out that character sheet. You loved it. I loved My it. I eyes, eyes lit up. My <laughs> eyes lit up. And another plug for another game, just for anyone who's interested. That was the character and if, I think I got mentioned a few times on the Discord with this. I'm not sure, um, but the the Star Trek Adventures Captain's Log. Yes, you're, you're they've sure done that. something similar, yeah. uh, where they've greatly simplified some of the more fiddly elements of Star Trek Adventures, right? Which it, which which is the 2D20 game, right? Yes. Uh, sorry, yeah, it's a, it's really? another TTRPG. No, it's a Mophidius. Modifius. Oh, right? Modifius, okay. Great. Yeah. Publisher, yeah, great. Yeah. Is it who does Dune? Side they do Dune. Dune. They okay. do Dune. They do. They oh, just yeah. came Fallout. out with. Uh, they just came out with uh, Dreams of Machine. Do, uh, 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 Machines and Dreams. They do something. Vampire. Uh, I don't know if it's Masquerade anymore, but Are they, they just do grabbing now. every IP they can. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And so, if you're immediately overwhelmed, and and you look at it and you go, 
ah, man, like I'm I'm going to make the wrong decision. Man, I don't I, know if there's a wrong decision in PF2. Like, there's a lot of stuff you don't have to take. Uh, you're a veteran gamer. And armor. No, I'm not a veteran gamer. <laughs> I can barely play PF2. Yeah, if you, if you, uh, I mean, obviously, so if you can keep, if you keep the potency rune on your weapon yeah. and the striking rune on your weapon and the potency rune that's on your armor decision, and the resilience right. rune on your armor, yeah. right? Uh, if that's near max to whatever you can afford. Any other stuff. Okay. That's right. a, if you have an 18, yeah, probably even a 16, honestly, in right. your stat, in your core stat, um, and then uh, you have five armor class. And then if you you want to max your armor class. Yep. So yeah. if you're a light armored character who has a plus one uh, item bonus to the armor yeah. class, then you want to make sure your dex is giving you plus four. Yep. Um, unless you're one of the heavy armor wielders, in which case you want plus six, yep. which is pretty much what the armor will give you. Uh, once you do those things, you're good. Um, you're kind of good. I mean, I would honestly, I'm curious. I, again, we don't have the time on this channel to do it, but I would love to take a situation where I take like a combat, or even maybe like a series of combat, like two or three, like a whole night. And th and this could be with people from the patreon or whatever and i have them build characters and we go through a set of encounters and these could be reasonably good build characters then we go through and they have they don't have like they have basically potency runes and striking runes but they don't have any other runes on their weapon they've chosen no feats mm -hmm. right at all they only have their base class features and abilities how how much Oh, your worse would it be? Are going to basically be identical. And your spellcasters will pretty much be identical because they'll still sure. have spells. Yeah. But like, how different would they be? Or maybe you know what? Maybe spellcasters just cast cantrips. I don't know. You know, like like Actually, like that'd be an interesting experiment. Like, would they be? I mean, I think I think the gains balance on cantrips. I, I think that they would do okay. Yeah. Now, could they take out an extreme encounter? No, but no. you're not supposed to fight an extreme encounter. But the game basically tells right. you don't fight an extreme yeah, encounter I, except for I once or twice that, a campaign. See how see how well that runs against numerous amounts of moderates. Must be right. Which yeah, is what the game like, what is, is <laughs> pretty much like APs basically expect you to fight moderates. Right. And then throw in a couple of severes, right? To test against because those are supposed to be your boss fights. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that would look. That here's the, here's uh, the, here's by the way, worst Damian Williams about... wanted Smith. Oh, okay. uh, Modifius, dis uh, Modifius distributes Vampire the Masquerade in Europe, but Renegade actually makes Vampire the Masquerade after White Wolf screwed the pooch and Paradox well, well, Studios closed the map. Yeah, I know so, it was complicated. You have but two I did see the book. chats, by the way. Oh, thank oh, you. Before Kev. we get to the super chats, the worst thing about it, uh, uh, is uh, for <laughs> PF2 is leveling up your character in paper and pencil. Oh, because erase, you have to oh, yeah, erase, erase every, game, every and, single yeah. skill thing. It's like oh my god, that's where I'm like the VTT can well, just press a button. I'm like just just level me up. <laughs> um, Damian Williams, our friend. Uh, by the way, Damian, did you get your traveler book? Um, we actually we uh, we we did, we did a traveler stream a while ago, and we gave away two traveler books. And oh. I just never forgot. I've never Someone I think just got there, so they were talking you, about on the stream. Well, so on, the, the, the one of the people who won the contest yeah. got it, and, and then joined their Patreon. Yeah, because they, the, they, yeah, they thought yeah, it was yeah, very yeah, nice. Nice. So I was like, oh, was yeah. Like, Rick was like, you trying to join the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Rick immediately, <laughs> and Rick immediately was trying to get them to join his uh, traveler. Rick is game. relentless. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told him I said it kind of it kind of started a. Oh, there he is, Ken. Yeah, hey, welcome, Ken. Hey, glad to see you, buddy. I'm glad you got it. And he said he goes, I actually was like. I appreciated that he appreciated. He's like, it was packed really well and it was in great condition. Cause like, oh, nice. I get tilted when like corners mm. get damaged. Yes. So like, it was like completely encased in like a bubble oh, wrap. Side layer. note, Paizo, why do you ship minis with your books and then have the book get dinked by the mini? Right. I, I, Go back I to the cards, Paizo. Go back Just to the cards. The cards, please. The cards. Please. I actually like their card game too. Yeah. The card game was good. Um, Damian Williams says, modern gamers see death as a failure of design. And, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of true. Yeah, I mean, I mean video gamers throughout and, and, time. But you know what? I don't think that that's... I, I think they're right, though. Yeah. I think that these characters are just require a tremendous amount of effort and yeah. work yeah. and, you know, just to go into them. And, yeah, like, just being like, oh, I rolled badly and now I'm dead, you know... Yeah. Now, to be fair, if that I'm was okay happening, if that was happening night. to me every single session, and like a, oh, even, even in like old school essentials, you were not supposed to die that often, right? I would get pretty frustrated and frustrated, you yeah. know, fed up with that. But you you did die, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as often. It wasn't as often as people unless you're playing for glued to be. Um, <laughs> I mean, so, my barbarian just died after like four four sessions. Or death and, world. and uh, death you guys world. did die a lot. Abomination bolts. <laughs> and I'm okay it was with that. death. Like, world. He died. It was called death world. <laughs> it was called death world. Um, <laughs> unfortunate pumpkin says that's not a hot take, Cas. I hate creating characters and leveling up because often all the massive number of choices don't matter or matter so much little that it's just boring. There you go. And I think yeah. that's you know. I think that's really what you know. It comes down to is I, I don't I like making choices, but I like making choices that really matter. Impactful. I yeah. think that's what Aaron said, and I think it was right on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was actually a question that wasn't sure. super chat, yeah. and it asked, "What's your guys' take on two D twenty systems?" 
or games. Yes. I, I haven't played I a single one. Want to play STA? Yeah. So let me. Let I me, would play Dune too. Because I, I would. Hear it's I'd play Dune just because it looks cool. Yeah. But I've never played two D twenty. So let me tell you why I like two D twenty. Okay. I like two D twenty for the same reason I like Legend of the Five Rings, and I like two D twenty for the same reason I like Fabula Ultima. <laughs> the reason is because in two D twenty games you have two sets of attributes: column A and column B. Column A might be what your character's skilled at. Column B might be what drives your character, what motivates your character. So in a game like Dune, you might have like faith, duty, loyalty, okay? When you go to make a check, and those have numbers, mm-hmm. and in 2D20, what you do is you, when you make a check. This is kind of like approach and skill. It's like approach and skill from yeah. Legend of the Five Rings. You say, okay, my character is doing something technical. Mm-hmm. But he's doing it to save his family. So this is out of his duty. So my, my technical skill is eight. My duty is eight. So my total is 16. Mm-hmm. Now I have to roll 2d20, and I have to get a d20 that's underneath 16. Mm-hmm. So if my stats were, now, maybe my character doesn't, isn't, isn't a man of faith. His faith score is only four. So if he was doing this in a situation where faith was what was driving his, you know, I believe in them. Right. Yeah, I'm not much of a believer. So now it's eight plus four is 12. Right. And what this means is you can just create and mix and match this beautiful harmony between the narrative and the mechanics back and forth. Oh, and I just it, realized I'd be amazing at this game. <laughs> well, and the, and, and the other reason I like Legend of the Five Rings so much is because fundamentally the game asks you, which of the five approaches, how are you doing this check? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go talk to them. What are you like doing right? and how are you doing it? And it's not infinite. It's not 500. It's five, right? right? It boils everything down to five. I'm going to go speak with this person and convince them that they should honor the treaty. Okay, mm-hmm. how are you doing that? Are you going to appeal to them, their logic and reason? Are you going to cite historical examples of how, you know, the, these kind of... It's, it's okay. really like self-explanatory. Okay. Are, really you gonna, nice. are you going to try to smooge with them yeah. and try to be very polite and cordial and very differential? Threaten them. Are you going to threaten them so and get in their them. face? Lie to them. Right? Are you going to lie to them? You basically just... It goes, there are five basic ways that you can do things. Right. All right? Pick one of those. And that relates to what your ring dice is, which is right. how many dice you roll, which is how successful you are. But it also is telling you, you are telling the game what dice to roll, but the dice are also telling you how to role play. Right. Yeah. And so it's this fantastic back and forth. And, and, and like, that's such a great job too, because like those approaches really control that narrative. If you're intimidating someone, like you're not charming them. Right. And it, and it, has, a it has a consequence beyond the dice beyond roll. The dice roll. Right. Yes. Yes. And that's the other element of it, which I, I really like Legend of the Five Rings, because Naturally, in those situations, it would be like it doesn't make as much sense in Pathfinder 2 or D&D, but it would be like if I said, hey, you can pick any of your six stats for any skill. I'm going to go make a thievery check using strength. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. going to go make a diplomacy check, make it using constitution. Right. I, I get that. The, make an okay, intimidating I get that that doesn't that's that kind strength. of doesn't make sense in D&D, which is why I like 2D20, right. which is why I well, like Legend of the Five Rings. There is a variable rule. But like intimidation with strength is an obvious one and Bob would love that. Yeah. Right. But but Legend of the Five Rings is built around this idea. It does right. so much okay? better. Yeah. So it does it a lot better. But one of the things I really, really like about that, though, is because now. The default option in D&D would be like, well, my strength's 22, so I diplomate with strength. So Legend of the Five Rings has another level where it says the GM knows what this particular check, maybe it's a person, right. maybe it's a challenge. Demeanors. Certain approaches that I was getting at. are easier or much harder than well, others. Like, so I know that this character is absolutely not intimidated by anyone. And so if you go and use a fire-based approach against them, your the DC to succeed is going to be really high and you'll probably fail. What about even even like how you can't like command someone at like a higher uh on, or oh, status yeah. than you? That's, that's like another level. Oh yeah. yeah. That's that's, I'm like, that's, that's like another, a system. Yeah. Right. right, right. I'm like, I can't command this person. I gotta go up and like well, your, and, your, your and, again, and stuff like that. That's, that's not that awesome. I want to gush, <laughs> but what they are talking about is there are uh there are three ways. There's a, a, a couple social skills in Legend of the Five Rings. One of them is called courtesy, mm-hmm. where you are basically being very deferential and courteous. Another is command, mm-hmm. not quite intimidate, but where you are basically, you know, saying like, "Look, I'm telling you what to do." Well, in the world of Legend of the Five Rings, there is this idea of status. Some 
people are higher status than you in society. Some people are lower status than you in society. And you need to, quote, use the right skill because what it forces you to do is you go, I, the, the, the game is going to penalize me if I am not super courteous to this samurai who is higher ranked than me because if, if I just go up there and give them shit and give them lip, the game is actually going to punish me, which forces me, the player, to role, to play. role play. Yes. Right. Yep. Yes. In a fun way, though. But in a fun way. Because we do ask that question. Mm -hmm. Basically, every time we're talking to someone, we're like, all right, what's their status? Right. Because you're, it, it, it's like a little number floating above <laughs> their head, right? So we're like, oh, he's status. Well, no, no, you guys have to guess. Sometimes. Well, right. sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Right. Sometimes They're, we know. Well, obviously, right. Right. the crane lady was like right. the bee's knees. Right. So we're right. like, right. okay. So you courteous, go in courteous. with courteous, <laughs> right? Right. Um, well, like, yeah, the uh, the one lion guard, right? Like, that was a tough one, right? Because sure. this is an honorable position. But he's not an ambassador. Right, right, right. Exactly. You know? So, yeah, it, 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 that is definitely the case. Um, Sean Clayton, our boy Sean. Oh, yeah. Mike, Mike. Mike Tizano. What's his I can't remember the last Mike name. Tabusco. Tabusco. Yeah. Tabuno. Yeah. Tabuno. Mike, Mike, Mike Tabuno. Mike T. Sean uh, the, uh, the assistant principal. Uh, yeah. The sounds like Prince. Prince. <laughs> he says, it sounds a lot like Blades in the Dark with the players choosing their action and the GM choosing the position and effect. Yes. It's similar. Yeah. Except, it's similar. And I, by the way, I do like Blades in the Dark do. for that reason. But what I like about this more, Sean, is the player chooses their approach. It's up to them. The, the, the GM, when, when a player goes to do something in Legend of the Five Rings, the GM will set the skill, you know, most of the time. I'm going to jump across this. Okay, that's going to be a fitness check, right. right? But the player gets to pick whichever of the five approaches they want. And there's a lot of decisions that go into that, right? Yeah, I was going to say, like, like it. But you, Piero Sopia says, is there a penalty for being courteous to someone that's lower status? Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. Yeah. There's you're a, like, you're you supposed to right command skill. them. You are supposed to command them. There was them. someone I almost courteous, and you were like, are you? Are, are you you're, asking? You need to be. Them? Are you asking them or telling them, like, the, Shit. It yeah, was yeah, the, yeah. It was I, think the innkeeper. I think that's even how I said this. I said, are you right. asking him or are you telling him? Yep. I was like, shit, I, I tell them. Like, I have to command them because it I am a higher station. Like I need to right. say it with, with right. authority. Right. So, so, say it with your chest. Because we were we were going in to get a room at an inn. Yeah. And this tur it, it turned into a stressful moment for Bob because when, when Derek asked that, that was question. Oh, that was made stressful. <laughs> Bob was like, wait a minute. Uh, what do I do? Yeah. And what's actually really great, um, well, Mike, I know you're Mike T. I'm saying not that, not that Mike T. Yeah, We're talking Mike. different Mike T. Uh, you're from, not the assistant principal. You're not the yeah. assistant principal from uh, from the fiasco game at, at Origins. Um, what's interesting, by the way, again, just going off on these side notes, there's a very clear, there's a very clear protocol. Yes. You're lower ranked than me. I will command you. I tell you and what like, to and do. And, you know, it's like, it's like a dog. You know, they, they always say dogs are happy when they, they know who's the alpha, mm -hmm. right? They know who's in charge. And the situation's reversed. You're higher ranked than me. I am deferential to you. There's very clear social rules. Legend of the Five Rings, you know, sort of reflects this. But it also reflects the fact that when two people are the same status, right. it's kind of muddy as shit. It is muddy yeah. as shit. Because you you're be like, super careful. Uh, well, you're like, how, how are we supposed to talk? <laughs> there, there's like right. no, there's no rules for how we're supposed to communicate. Which because is really funny. When you look at a party too, we seldom talk to each other in the party. <laughs> and while that's pretty common for like Pathfinder games, right. like <laughs> beats, no, it's a huge thing though. Because like, how I interact with like Kaz versus Bob is a thing I have to think about. Because we're the same status. Right. Uh, half the so time. Bob and I never talk, but like, only you when know. you're like, you can have the room, sir. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> most, most of our interactions, though, too, have come through my Yo, yo Jimbo. Right. No. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like uh, this l lower rank guy comes in, lower status guy comes in, and then we're both interacting with him. Yeah, yeah. It's like our proxy guy. <laughs> hey, right. Right. It's almost like, tell your lord. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's like, right there. I told, like, I told him to tell you to, to, <laughs> that, I mean, they send that you're being a little bitch. I mean, right. The, the crane lady sent a courier to tell us that right. we had to tell that courier. It's right. a whole thing. <laughs> right. You, you dealt with her entirely through courier. We oh, need yeah. to work together. Yep. Yes. Right. So I don't want to like, piss Kaz off, but like, I also can't just be like, hey, Kaz, can you, can you do this? Because like, you're the guy that could talk to him. Because right. if I do that, I lose honor. Right? right. So my other option is like, Kaz, obey me, you know? <laughs> right. And then I lose honor. Right. And then you're also kind of pissed, right? Sure. Right. So instead, it's just like, even within the party, it's just like, hmm. Yeah, our, our two characters. How should we proceed, you know? And then like, <laughs> you know, someone might make a suggestion and my character would just like, like kind of like barely like indicate his approval and like, we'll go on. Right. <laughs> Didn't he like start to get like suspicious of uh, 
You. Of me. You. Yeah. Yes. No, we're in the same stance. So we keep because you lied. Muddling, well, yeah, I keep lying. We're muddying <laughs> the waters, and he's like, "Can I make a?" Yeah, he want he made a, he basically he made like, a, a sense motive check yeah, yeah, yeah. against <laughs> you to see if you were kind of not being truthful. Which, yeah. to be fair, you you're not. One hundred percent. I believe I passed that check. Bob, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I think what it was is I think you just got the TN, and I was yes. like, so yeah. you get yeah. a sense. You don't know exactly you don't what's know what going on. What it is, yeah. but, but you wrong. you do know that something is up. And yeah. what I love about this again, this game is just so deep with the social interactions. Right, Kaz's character is so good at reading the room. One second. Everything we've been talking about in this game is entirely just the social interaction. Oh, yes. Yeah. This right. is, we, we didn't fight until not like a five, the fifth session. Right. Not <laughs> a single die. Well, one die was rolled. Sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. All right. But, but like, Kaz is just really good at reading a room. So, like, when I learned about Bob, Kaz learned about Bob from me. Yes. Because he read my facial expression oh, and remember put that. it together. I learned that you learned right. about Bob. Bob being <laughs> untruthful and not a single word was said no, i was just like <laughs> yeah so uh so so one of the reasons i like this game and the reason i like 2d20 games is because it uses these idea of two separate things it, it just gives you so much flexibility mm -hmm. now there's a lot of other things in 2d20 that i like it, it's got a meta currency it's got threat it's got momentum right like the, when the players are kicking ass you can kind of build up these uh tokens that you can help you can spend with each other to sort of get you through you know tough times and uh the gm can create these threat tokens to oh you know the party's it's a little too easy for them right now i'm gonna throw something extra you know difficult them so there's these narrative tools kind of like fate um but I, what I really like about the 2D20 system is that is that ability to mix and match yeah. abilities. And so in Fabula Ultima, there are four ability scores. There's dexterity and might, so dex and strength. Mm -hmm. And then there's insight and willpower. That's it. Okay. Now, there's no skills in the game. Instead, when you go to do something, the GM will tell you which two stats to roll. And it can be the same stat twice. Might and might. So you could say might oh. and might. Okay. Right? You're lifting the gate. Right. If you're if it's just a pure brawn exercise, I would say roll your might and roll your might. Throwing a rock. So if your might backs. was a D10, you would roll two D10. If I said, okay, like uh, you know, you're it's a it's a it's a crossbow. That's just all dex. Mm -hmm. It's a long bow. That's might and dex because right. it's more about your strength and your aim. So you need like probably two different colored dice. So you say this one's nope, because it doesn't matter. Oh, it oh, oh, doesn't matter. The dice right, don't matter. You're taking... your, your dice will be different sizes or the same. No, you're just adding them together in yeah. Fabula Ultima. Got it. Right. And okay. so so basically, and there's no modifiers. Is Because I think, isn't Daggerheart where like one is, oh, one might yes. be yeah, hope yeah, yeah. and one you're might be. You're thinking of Daggerheart, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. 2d12 and you, one is fear and one is hope. One's hope and one's something. Yeah. yeah and, and you have to see which one rolled higher. That's what I was like. I was like, is that kind of what you're talking about here? So this is closer this to is what, even simpler. This is closer to what the 2d20 system is. Yeah. Where yeah. You're trying yeah. to beat a number. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, that, yeah, great. Deals I mean, 2d20 is where you're trying to roll under. Under. This yeah. you're trying to go over. Right. So in, in this one, you're going to beat the, the okay. number mm -hmm. higher. But like the point is, it's like, it's really simple and easy to understand. You're like, oh, if I do this, I'm rolling a d10 plus a d8. And that's it. Those are the numbers I have to add. Whereas if Sounds like, nice. whereas like if my stat was a D six and you're, and I said, roll double insight. And let's say your insight was D six. You would go, okay, I'm rolling two D six. Yeah. So obviously it's much harder to get a higher number. And, and, and I like and that though, because it, that, that, is that a, a number set by you? The GM says yeah. like the DC is the this DC or, is this, okay, you okay. know, and that easy is four, seven, okay. 10, 13, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But like the, the point is, is that, um, uh, is he, it set before you roll, like in L5R, where I know what the TN is? At this TN point, Bob's is? just trying to learn the mechanics to literally right. play it. <laughs> right. Can you just uh, tell me what's on page 32? Yeah. Really on page 32 I right. don't know that the rules specifically state this, but generally speaking, yes, you're okay. going to kind of know what, you know, what. Because what, I know in L5R, that's actually like a really interesting thing. Like you set the TN. It's like, okay, now I know, right. like, I have to do X. Yeah, right. There's environmental cues to help you, but. Yeah. And, and. So again, there's just I, I like that about the 2D20 system. I like that's about this game. But um, and again, if you guys have thoughts, comments, questions, whatever, you know, let us know. We got another, we got oh, another we're, half we're hour free play right now. Yeah, we're we're free play. You this guys is are, an AMA. Dude, Dan White uh, had a comment here which I want to talk about. Okay, avoidance of using mechanics is one of the most interesting ways that rules shape gameplay, which is 100 percent correct. But I want to talk about the invert of that, right? So it's very easy to be like, oh, I have to use courtesy, right? And you feel like you're locked in, but there are some very interesting moments when you break that paradigm. Like, and if you remember our very, we weren't there, you left, but um, in our first campaign mm -hmm. for L5R, you know, I had a, a very younger character, very lower status character who made a command check against his elders and I ended up rolling like 
I don't know, seven or eight successes. Oh, which geez. Yeah, it's massive. Exploding. Double, oh, triple yeah. exploder. And, and, and it was very interesting because the dice are going, you succeeded by an insane, like this happened. Yes. Right. It did have, the dice are telling us what right. happened. It wasn't right. pure fluffy bullshit time, Mike T. It was, that was a dice roll. Correct. Yeah. So it was real. Uh, it was very real. Yeah. But now, you know, Derek and, and, and I secondarily have this interesting narrative to figure out because we're like, okay, you're a student that just got into the middle of the school and command, like yelled at all the teachers and masters here. The right. most severe breach of protocol. But you succeeded by like seven, which in L5R is insane. It's like the equivalent of like hitting God off a katana, right? <laughs> right. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really making that up. Um, and so now it's interesting because Derek's like, okay, you clearly broke protocol. But at the same time, it worked. Did something incredible. What is this, right? And so, so did you just lose like status or something? Oh, I still took it. It was hit. a status. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bomb. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a status. That's bomb. what's so cool. You succeeded, but you also got right. hit. Oh, no. I think well, that's what I'm really saying, cool. though, is like, don't like there's these, it, it, the game creates these dramatic moments where yes. the right way to do that would be I'm going to make a courtesy check, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes, and that's why L5R is great, because that's the whole point of the game, is to have these moments of outburst where you are human. And Bushido is impossible, and you're not divine. And you have these incredible dramatic moments where you kind of break code for a moment, and everyone almost like takes a breath, and then like the game kind of continues, right? But it's just really exciting. Yeah, and 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 Sean said, I love that about the FFG Star Wars and Genesis, which this is very Genesis inspired. The Legend of Five Rings game oh, that yeah. we're talking yeah. about was originally created by. FFG. It's kind of like a, it's like Genesis Light. It's not yeah. the full thing. Um, it says getting a result and then working together to know what happened to make that true. Mm. Right, the result of that die roll tells us. You know, these these senseis are commanded by you. Yeah. But then the question is, well, why would that happen? What right. happened? Right. And like what is going through their minds and what happens to your character's reputation, right. honor, the whole, and you know, shebang. That's the game. One yeah. die roll leads to 15 minutes of just interesting, like, and again, not fluffy bullshit time, but actual world building. Right. And, and then right, ultimately almost committing suicide. Right. And of course, almost ultimately. <laughs> uh, great role playing. <laughs> Debbie says, I keep on hearing, um, Sad 5e e pally main noises from my three sessions in new player champion. How can I make things more interesting? Maybe buff for this guy. Isn't the paladin one of the most powerful classes in 5e? The smites that they get are insane. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought paladin was really, really good. Paladin's super strong. We, uh, we need more details. So I, I keep hearing sad 5e pally, pally main, main noises coming from, from my three sessions in with a new player. Um how can I make things more interesting? Is he too? Is he too? Maybe strong? buff. Is it? Is it your player? Yeah, maybe. The, does your player just suck? I don't know. Um, hell, he's playing Pathfinder. Oh, oh, oh! oh he's playing Pathfinder yeah, Second Edition. Sorry, oh yeah, no, you're <laughs> fucked. Champions okay. are terrible. Uh, okay, there you yeah, go. Champions yeah. have a lot of problems, and <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. so confused. That, yeah. was a, okay. that was a setup. Okay, that was a setup. Okay, the the, the 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 champion, the paladin is, in in my opinion, of. There's fundamental issues um, with the class. Yep. And Aren't I, they I, remaking it, though? I, well, they're in uh, theory, Bob. They're supposed to remake it, everything, it, potentially, it, but we'll see what they do. Um, or sec, second time. The, 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 four. I, and I, I've talked about this before, but the main issue with the champion is that their shtick is that they have this reaction. Now, to be fair, at low level, I, I, I mean, it's what? One pl level plus two. So, you know, at high level, oh, take off 17. I could feel pretty good. But at low level, it's takeoff three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's takeoff. It doesn't necessarily, and it's your reaction. And then the other problem is, and this is, again, I've, I've lived this. I saw this with um, yeah, with Nick, one. right? Didn't you play one too? No, uh, no, I was just no. free archetype he, champion oh, okay. for, the, <laughs> for the armor. For the armor and the broken <laughs> okay. of the reaction. Um, the uh, problem is that the champion, you, you look at the class and you think, oh, I'm going to be a shield guy. Mm -hmm. And then you pick up shield block. But then your champion's your reaction. reaction is designed to use your reaction. And you don't want to burn your reaction because you want to save it for one of your allies. And so it sets up this really weird pattern yeah. of play where you're kind of encouraged to not use your abilities. But actually, though, you did just solve the, the problem. So uh, great role playing, Debbie. Have your player remake to a fighter and take uh, archetype crusader and then you're good. <laughs> that Boom. could work. Um, because the other problem with the champion is they tend to be really, really high AC. Which so is no great, gonna attack them. but then unless your GM is being really, really not like, like I'll be completely honest with you, if because at level seven, I mean, obviously fighters can get heavy armor proficiency. Yeah, you know, champions aren't the only class in the game that gets heavy armor proficiency. There's not many actually though, but um, 
at level seven, which is probably much later than the he's talking about, they become expert in armor proficiency. That's like so much faster than anybody else. Right. So at level seven, they have six points of AC from their thing. They might have a shield, which is, you know, they're kind of good at. Then they have two more points because of proficiency. A, a, a champion's armor class can be like four or five points higher mm -hmm. than some other people in their party member. And I will admit, you probably would feel like a god among men if the GM had, you know, four or five or six PL minus one or PL minus two monsters. Oh, and they're yeah, swarming yeah. in and they're surrounding your and they're just ignoring everybody. Else. They're yeah. ignoring the rogue. <laughs> they're ignoring the cloister cleric. And they are just you got four of them on you. Right. Yeah. And they're just wailing into you. And the GM's like, you know, 27. And you're like 30. And he's like, 28. I, can't I do 30. Him. He's like, all right, this guy's got you on the flank, so your AC's down by two. You're like, okay. And then at the end of the, all those attack rounds, like one attack one sneaks hits. in. And then you're like, lay on hands. I'm good. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you would feel, feel awesome. Sweet. So that's never going to happen. Peter. That's never no. going to happen unless you like yeah. make that happen. I mean, we, we would call that soft fudging. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's just not the way that we tend the, to play. The oh, DM is, yeah, Nick is was gonna, winning for the players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick was going to rework it so that he could like be like a single hand free and grapple type. Right. Because he was like, no one's attacking me. Which yeah. is way better. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's what I always tell people. If you're going to be a champion and you want to do that, uh, keep a hand free. Go with the Captain America build. Yep. Yeah, get a shield. Get a shield. Free. Get a shield. And you can even put a boss on it so that you can hit with it. And then grapple people. Yep. Yep. Because your strength's going to be good. You're going to have a good athletics. Yeah. And then when you grapple people, they've got a horrible decision. Do I try to escape, which burns actions and increases my multiple attack penalty? Yep. So even if I do escape, I'm yeah. now down yeah. to two actions and I have a minus five map. Yep. Horrible. Or I could stay here in melee because I'm immobilized because I'm grappled and attack the champion. Right. In which case, the champion's getting exactly what he yep. wants. Right. Um, and, and so you're kind of winning both ways. Yeah, so that's I, good advice. Yeah. So I would say in general, as written, the way that the champ now, if you watch Rise of the Rune Lords, you'll know that I changed one of Nick's core focus spells to basically make it more like Divine Challenge. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say the other thing you do is still the four E bark system, and then you're set. But right, <laughs> um, taunts and yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what yeah. Damien well, Damien says <laughs> champions need powers that force people to attack them, and then they don't have them. It's a tank without a taunt. And, and again, I'm I'm probably going a little bit deep into the weeds here. But in 4th edition Dungeons and Dragons, there was a condition called marked. And if yes. your PC marked an, an enemy, that enemy or that monster or whatever took a minus two or a minus three penalty to attack anyone except oh. you. Ah, yeah, if yeah. they attacked you, there was no penalty. So already there was sort of like a, even if they said, fuck you, I'm going to go attack this person. But the paladin had an extra level ability. You know, the fighter was doing it through martial skill or whatever. The paladin would literally use an action and like basically like a beam of light would come down and basically brand you as being like you have been challenged by me you're a bitch and not only did that character <laughs> not only did that monster get minus two or minus three to attack anybody else if they attacked anybody else whether they hit or miss they also took automatic damage oh, every geez, time yes. they attacked oh and it was it was good damage and it was really really reasonable damage it was you're, good you are very incentivized. long story damage. short you were very incentivized to go attack the paladin yep so when we were playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition, there is a uh, litany that the, the champion gets in Core Pathfinder 2, Litany Against Wrath. Yep. But it is written so badly because what it should do is encourage the enemy to attack the champion. Yep. Right. But it doesn't. And so I ended up rewriting Litany Against Wrath, and I changed it into Litany of Protection. Yep. And it basically, I sort of emitted a focus spell. And I basically made it kind of like the Paladin's yeah. challenge from uh, pa uh, from fourth edition D&D, &D, and I changed it around. So, yeah, rework the class entirely, rebuild the character, or be a fighter with high charisma and free archetype into yep, champion. Those are your options. So that way you can get the lay on hands and the reaction. And quite honestly, that's all you really need because their feats I, aren't great. I, I also, if you're a fighter, you get plus two to attack, yeah. so you're just going to be better. And I, think, I think the rework to fighter is the better the best option there <laughs> i just it's, it's just, the quickest just call it a paladin uh, oh i'm a holy warrior yeah well no you, you look you pick up the free, free archetype you pick yeah. up the well i don't I know mean, if you're doing free archetype yeah. but you pick up the archetype you get the anathemas you yeah, get the no, edicts you're you, still you, champion you're still a right. champion you're still bound by all the other stuff you know um much to the chagrin of in our players <laughs> yeah, right exactly <laughs> um malkin says shoot your monks principle let the champion feel their ac and reaction basically i specifically don't use pl plus two outside bosses anymore so that i can budget more weak monsters very including smart. minions type. Good very job. smart I, I i still say you know caution you to avoid 
soft, soft fudging. Yeah, yeah but yeah, but yeah. but you know, I was talking about the PL range. You know, good. Um, but you want, yeah, you want to be minus one uh, to plus one. Yeah, I, I think minus plus one to minus one is a really really good range. I mean, look, <sighs> Powered by the Apocalypse teaches us that one of the core principles is be a fan of the PCs. Yes, right. And you're absolutely right. Shoot your monks. Right, is being a fan of the PC. Yeah. Attacking the champion is being a fan of the PC. But Pathfinder 2 doesn't have that principle. Uh, <laughs> and, and part of the problem with Pathfinder 2 is like that game is trying to reward and incentivize different behaviors, right? Powered by the Apocalypse is trying to reward you for making an interesting character. Pathfinder 2, mechanically, by the way, I'm not talking about just like in the theoretical. Powered by the Apocalypse rewards you for making an interesting character yeah. who role plays well and does it. Pathfinder 2, you, you might have that in your campaign, but that's not what the game system is rewarding you. The game system is rewarding you in Pathfinder 2 for being OP as shit. Following the build guide. Um, I already know the answer to this. Oh, uh, yeah, Derek, what's the worst Hoyred. ruling that you've uh, ever made? What's the worst? No, no. It says, what's the worst ruling Derek ever made? Yeah. You, I don't think I can answer that. I, I think you can answer it yourself, but I, I don't know if I would even know what you. I mean, I don't know if this question is fair. You want me to go back to when he was 12? Because he made some pretty poor I made decisions some when he was 12. real shit decisions Life when I was 12. Uh, yeah, uh, it, the air, it, you get the airship. It crashes in the Forgotten Realms. Yes. And you can't repair it. Um, <laughs> Ryan is correct. He said landing story incoming. Um, <laughs> all right, you know what? For people who may not know the story. Here we go. We'll tell the story. Uh, Bob was not here for this. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know but, anything about uh, this. You've heard the story. But Kaz yeah. and Smith uh, both were. Um, so we were playing Scum and Villainy. Oh, that's what. We were playing Scum and Villainy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is, Scum and Villainy is a... Forge PTSD. in the Dark. In other words, it uh, uses the same engine as uh, Blades in the Dark. So you're, you're in this case, you're like a, a group of scoundrels mm. and ne'er-do-wells. You're basically like the cast of the Firefly um, or uh, the Serenity. Um, I think our boat. No, it wasn't the Serenity boat. It was it's called the Spelljammer. Spelljammer. That was, was, the, that was the name of your ship. Yeah, it was we, the Spelljammer. We based off of we the, the Firefly boat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's totally spelled. Okay. I mean, no, in the game. Because they have chassis. Yeah, no, there, I, I no know. there's three chassis. Yeah. There's Star Wars. Okay. Cowboy Bebop and Firefly. Oh, so we took Firefly. Yeah, yeah we those are literally the three yeah. options. So we were playing Scum and Villainy, and we had been playing for a while. And the scoundrels got a mission. They didn't. They didn't get a full set of. Or should the, the crew of the Spelljammer got a, a high paying mission, which was they were to infiltrate a a world, and infiltrate a secret hegemonic base it's like the Empire, and recover this cargo pod. And actually, you know, the cargo pod had like some sort of alien Xenos life form in it or whatever. And this was on this like Hoth-like uncharted world. So they came in and they're coming into the system, but they've got to avoid detection. And so that, this is where the score uh, starts, right? And Blades in the Dark and it's coming villain. You don't do all the planning. Once the party says, we're going to go to the planet, we're going to steal the shit. I go, okay, how are you guys getting in? We're going to sneak in. And I go, okay, the, the mission starts. And I roll a die to determine... Uh, it's called the engagement role to determine, do you start in a controlled position, a risky position, or a desperate position? I don't know whether it was because it was a bad plan or I rolled poorly or whatever. It was a desperate position. It was, you know, not, not a controlled position. So in other words, the dice commanded that I needed to make this a desperate situation. So what did I do? I said, okay, well, you're coming in and obviously you're trying to avoid detection. So you got to come in low and fast. Mm -hmm. But there's a horrific, like, hurricane, ice storm, blizzard Snowstorm. of, like, epic proportions, day after tomorrow type shit, right? So it's going to be really, really rough. And the game tells you the first check of the game is in a desperate position. And I say, okay, well, what are you, what are you guys trying to do? And they're like, well, the first thing we got to do is land. And I said, okay, well, that's going to be a desperate roll. And I said, all right. So he lands the ship. Tim makes a pilot roll, and he rolls a four or five, which means you do it. But there is a complication. Uh, there's a complication. And in the case of a desperate <laughs> situation, now, by the way, the thing about Blaze of the Dark is remember, whether you're in a controlled position, a risky position, or a desperate position, if you get a six, the answer is you do it. There's no difference between those things. Right. And if you get a four or five, it's you do it with a, but if you're in a controlled position, it's a minor inconvenience. Right. If you're in a risky situation, it's a consequence. If it's a desperate situation, it's with a severe consequence. So it's just like trust your fate in a way, yep, yep, right? Yep. Just like trusting your fate yeah, from there's a- risk your, th um, There's two ways to do yeah, it. And the one- your risks. <laughs> the roguish fate. Yeah, yeah. Roguish fate versus, versus uh, uh, trusting, trusting fate. Yeah. Trusting fate. So they got that. So I said, okay, what, well, you, well, they landed. They succeeded. They made it to the ground, right? And what? Are, any good landing you can walk away from is a good landing. 
So I we said we literally couldn't walk away from that landing okay. because <laughs> no. we then collapsed into an ice cap. Okay. No, no, <laughs> nobody was nobody was hurt in the landing. So are you? No, we, okay. we couldn't leave. We were trapped. <laughs> okay. As the ship landed, even your analogy has failed here. I gave a I, the, no. The consequence I gave was that the landing gear and the landing structs became damaged. That Tim had to set the ship down too quickly, too fast, too hard, and too hard, and it landed. But the gear became damaged and would potentially be a problem and or maybe not even for this mission, but was just a problem, you know, in general. And there was this and Darth Gorlock and I go on uh, in Discord about similar situations all the time, which is the question is, there was some pushback from <laughs> my players about because one of the things it says is don't cheat people. If they succeed, they succeed. Right. Don't cheat them out of their success. And in fact, but here's the crazy part. One of the options that you have in Blades in the Dark when they roll a four or five, which is like the seven, eight, nine in Powered by the Apocalypse, mm -hmm. right? That mixed success is you can do things like they succeed, but with a consequence. But one of the other options is they succeed, but with reduced effect. In other words, you did it. You just didn't do it all the way, all the way, or as much or as yeah. good as you wanted. And there's a lot of philosophical the radar debate. operators saw the blips, right. but You're they're like, not sure. Right. So that would be a perfect example. Yes. We sneak in under the radar. You succeeded. But you did it with reduced effect, so someone caught a faint echo, right. and then someone goes, so you failed. and then someone goes, so we failed, because we you we got right. success, yeah. and success is we made it in right. stealthily. So in in the, right. in the players' mind, wait wait, in the, wait, wait, in the players' <laughs> wait wait, and in the players' mind, successful landing means we land, nothing's damaged, we're completely fine, no, nope, everything nope, is good, no, nope, no. Nope, <laughs> nope. Here's the thing, there was a consequence, right? So the players succeeded. The dice said the ship landed. Correct. Right? So let me give you an example of the same sort of thing. Yes. And how you should have done it. Okay. <laughs> and not killed the Hypothetically, game. Hypothetically, let's say you're taking a ship like the Serenity through this intense atmospheric battle, right? When you don't even have guns with this ship. So it's complete evasion. And you're flying in. You're going incredibly fast. And you finally land at the station that you're trying to get to, right? And you land the ship. You land the ship. But... Then a beam crashes in through the cockpit and it pills the pilot. Got it. That's a severe consequence. I should have killed Tim. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. yes. Because, because we landed the ship. We did. But there was a severe con And the consequence wasn't tied to the landing. You see what I'm saying? Right. It, it, like, Derek, right, right, right. So like, the landing. Right, right. So like, so like, he goes, oh, right. this bad thing happened that wasn't related to the landing, but right. because you rolled so, poorly. So by that boom. definition, if you were in a firefight, yeah. okay, and you were like, I'm going to shoot these guys, yeah. and you rolled a mixed success, yeah. right? I'd be like, oh, well, you killed them. Yeah. Then after they're all dead, the ceiling collapses and crushes you. Yeah. <laughs> not not yeah. they shoot you uh, back you and know, you're like you know what it is? no it's like you know like how in PBTA yeah. how like yeah. you Same can thing. succeed Shandrum. and then something bad happens so what wait wait you, Derek I was trying to pick this lock and now you're saying monsters are coming in because I rolled a 6 like that's an example where you can oh, no, be like, you like can, oh you succeeded picking the lock and then the orcs attack right you can totally do that and right. that is still something you could like for example you could have landed the ship and then I could have been like and ice yetis attack right like that is 100% right. possible that would have felt better but so, right that would have felt better what happened Oh well, wait. Yeah. You didn't so, finish the story. I'm like sitting right, here waiting sorry. for this. Everyone, now, everyone what is going to have the chat knows what the we story. We have PTSD. Is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so a couple of things that I do <laughs> want to before like I was even in the picture. Yeah, this yeah. game. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, maybe we were we right might, before. We might right have been playing. Before. I think we played Scum Villain right before our Pathfinder game. Um, okay. To be fair, another thing, um, Blaze in the Dark and Scum and Villainy are both like, man, you're a badass. You're a player. What? My pilot would never fuck the ship up like that. You're absolutely right. They couldn't. You can choose to resist any consequence you get. And when you choose to resist a consequence in that game, it is 100% successful. You will resist that consequence. It, is the all, prom, it though, always works. Okay? Because the other bad rule Derek made is that he didn't know how the stress rules work. Okay, that is, that is fair. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have a fucking drop of stress to fucking no. spend. <laughs> so the only <laughs> We were all drug addicts yes. and, and, and gambling mean, addicts. This game was so stressful in real life. So like, you Derek, guys quit? Yeah. Yes. We're, yes. Oh, okay. we're yes. so stressed, Derek, we can't play your game we anymore. Can, we, we, I knew, I all of us. the game, but I don't yes. know about this specific yeah. thing. So long story short, <laughs> Tim could have chosen to resist that consequence as the pilot. Mm -hmm. In fact, as a pilot, his special ability is he pays less stress to resist consequences resulting from piloting roles. Did he have stress to pay, though? Yeah, sure. Okay. And by the way, you can always pay stress. Even if you don't have stress, you just take a trauma. 
Which no, is how you permanently lose your character, by the way. But like, weren't we by this point? Because like, literally, this is the start of the mission. Oh, okay. This is literally that doesn't mean thing. anything because we probably didn't have enough time to heal because we also didn't have any money. We in were this stressed out of our eyeballs right. from like session two. Right. Well, to be like, fair, you that's were because we would spend all of our downtime trying to heal our stress, really? which just made us more stressful. Was that before <laughs> or after you built a mech suit and he built um it was uh, like a light speed engine? What did you say? Yeah, it was before. I, I, yeah, I, before. Built, the, I built the light speed engine. We didn't have any money because after that session, we Derek, started. I want to be Derek. I want to be a space marine <laughs> in Firefly. Hang on. Hang on. Is, wait, wait, wait. Session, did, did you or did you not? Were you space I'm marine? Getting, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm, I'm explaining how we got to the space marine. Because after that session, we realized it sucked, right? Yes. And so we're like, okay, well, we can't do anything in this game because it's too stressful. And anytime we succeed, Derek, like, blows up the ship. So <laughs> I have something to say. <laughs> so we're going to do milk runs, yes. which basically is like, all right, Derek, we're going into, like, a controlled space. It's super easy. And we're not doing anything illegal. We're literally going to deliver cargo. And you did that really well. And it was so boring and nothing happened. But if you do that enough times, you get money. And then... I became a space marine. We ran a race. <laughs> yes, I, I sniped okay. someone through two stars in space into another ship Good. with a conventional I, I, rifle. Okay. I want to talk about stress management. And I, hit. It was I want to talk about stress management here. Okay, in the in the Yours? world in the world in the world. <laughs> yeah, manage our stress okay. very well. In the we Procyon <laughs> sector, in the Procyon sector, technology isn't like what you would. It's not Star Trek. Right, no. ships don't have warp drives. They, they need jump gates. It's, it's Firefly. It's like very much like Firefly. Or space, well, jump gates. Yeah, like but jump gates aren't jump gates yeah. aren't from the, that. Mass anyway. Effect. Yeah, They're, they Stargate. They Cowboy had people. they had spent so much of their non-existent money on upgrading their ship that their ship now had against after we did all the milk runs against which was all. Really boring. No, no, this was this was. That was the entire campaign to upgrade the ship. That was the only thing we were Tim getting did. into the great wait, 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 space wait. race. Well, let's get let, let me get let me the be clear. Campaign was about let me be clear about the race. You guys went into that like twisted metal. Okay. Which is you guys, show. you guys went into that race, and you guys had spent a fortune against the laws of gods and men. You had a short range jump gate generator in your ship, which is theoretically illegal, in, <laughs> and it was like incredibly powerful. So you went through the race. They did try to shoot you, and you shot them out through space while flying between two binary stars, right. which was happened. I was in okay. vacuum when okay. this was going okay. on. By right. the way, then they clearly win the race. But while they're coasting to the finish line, they go, you know, we kind of want to look sweet. We, we flex, should we flex a little. We bit. flexed a little. So they activate their jump drive for no reason and have to make an insane check. And they're like, it's fine. We'll spend a bunch of stress. <laughs> and they do. And and the and the entire result was, so we look sweet. And and so yes, they spent a, a, a ton of. Uh, you hey, know. get back to the story. What happened on the landing? That what was the bad ruling. Oh, that that the <laughs> ship got damaged on the landing. We, we landed and then the ship broke. I don't think it's a bad ruling. It, it seems Aaron fine. And to be fair, I didn't bring it up today. That was the audience. I mean, it seems. I mean, I didn't hear anything that was like outlandish. That's why I was the, waiting the, for the outlandish part. The question is, if if you say that your action is, I'm going to land the ship. Yeah. And you succeed because yeah. the game says you succeed, but there's a consequence. Yeah. And if the consequence is the ship was damaged upon landing, do you feel like that? Invalidates no. you landing. Okay, the ship. I Five, let, let me put this in terms you would understand. Successful landing is is survival, in my opinion. Let me put this in terms you would understand. You're you're attacking for your barbarian. Yeah. He's really strong. He's got a sweet axe. Oh. Okay, you hit. You didn't crit though. Yeah, you hit. So your axe explodes. Yeah, your axe it's broke. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. To be fair, that actually did happen to him in Powered by the Apocalypse, <laughs> or uh, when I, we played Dungeon World. <laughs> I did lose it or whatever. <laughs> well, I kicked you off of yeah. a. I kicked you off a cliff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, wait, you said the ship got damaged. Yes. They're saying it exploded? No, it did not explode. It so got the, damaged. It's not the same thing. We could not fly the ship. It was unflyable. But it can be repaired? They did have to make one check, yes. Okay, so that's not the same thing. Which was going to take forever, and we were under. And we know, were in an ice storm. storm. Okay, Correct. So that's a little rough. In hostile territory. Well, yeah, it, it was supposed when you to say damaged, I thought maybe like. It was supposed to be we were on a time limit. It was, <laughs> it was supposed to be challenging and difficult. <laughs> All I know from this whole thing, because this I, is why I, killing Tim was the correct answer. Because <laughs> we'd be like, "This is so tragic. We must continue." Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see it in chat. What would have been? What would have been the yeah, better call? Let's get there? a poll. Let's get. A, what would have been the better call there? Uh, the ship is damaged upon landing, or Reavers attack and impaled. Oh no, big icicle. It was big, big icicle. A big icicle <laughs> falls from the sky and pales the like, pilot and kills him. Like semi Leave on the wind. Not like, oh wait, 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 wait. It seems. But like somehow doesn't damage the ship. 
right. when it impales him. Well, if because you think about it, because the ship it, was fine apparently. Because so. if it broke through the window yeah, we got and tape. impaled him, yeah. and I just, said, "Oh, also the front of the ship is now collapsed," you'd be like, "That's ridiculous." That'd be stealing that, our win. You're stealing our win. Right. You're stealing our yeah. win. Um, uh, a, a a nice like quarter sized hole. Right. Something we can put duct tape on. Yeah, you can just seal right. it up very right. easily. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know what? No, no. A, a cosmic ray strikes oh, him. See? Oh, perfect. Now that's a good GM ruling. There we go. Perfect. I, I feel like it, it should have been in the middle. Like it should have been the, the ship should have been damaged to an extent, but still like no damage, Bob. Not allowed. I disagree with that. Well, obviously I do too. But <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That's okay. But, but I'm know? okay with like maybe a, a, a person being injured. But this was this was know? after like. Being, we were, we, everything was stressing us out about right. this. I just campaign. liked that you guys. To be quit this you guys campaign. were just in bad places in your life at the time. <laughs> this is true. That, also I mean, true. Yeah, I can't. I like so he was just listen, aggravating. It was COVID. Everyone's in a bad place. Yeah, right. about reading the room. <laughs> Jesus. Well, yeah. And, and, and by the way, that is an important GM skill. And, and, and by the way, I'd like this to point is why out virtual sucks. And but, I, and I, you know what? And yeah. I can't even. I can't even. It's it's. This is telling because the final session before we canceled was you guys had been getting kind of pushed around by that rival racing gang, right? And you finally said enough is enough because they fucked with you on that race. Yes, they yes. shot And us. you finally completed with your no money, your space marine armor. Right. And you said, Oh, you know we what? boarded them. And you said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go track down their secret base and we are going to board them like a bunch of space marines on a boarding torpedo. Okay. And then we are going to go <laughs> corridor by corridor, space Hulk style. And, and we are going to them execute all. them all. <laughs> and we and did. you did. And <laughs> that you know, actually wasn't a very stressful adventure. Right? That was the not stressful part. Right. Getting right. shot through a torpedo okay. into a combat situation. <laughs> and, right. That, <laughs> we right, that. right. Right. Captain Malcolm Reynolds, totally fine right. with that. So Delivering after, the leaks. So after they execute, <laughs> after they kill this gang off, that was that session. And then we ended that. And then the next time we sat down to play, I brought the idea that, like, you know, there might be problems again. And then, like, <laughs> they were like every, everyone, broke was like, down. everyone broke down. They're like, Derek, I'm too stressed. I'm like, wait, shouldn't you have recovered? He's like, no, no, no. I, I me I, personally, I, I, can't I am too game. stressed. Every can, time we do something, there's a problem. Right. And I, this just feels like real life no, to and, me. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I lose you know, my Right, right. You guys when were, we fix something, three new problems show up. <laughs> You're like, it's just like work. <laughs> right. I'm just yeah. coming back to work. And you guys were like, please, God, Derek, just give us some goblins and kobolds and a fucking yes. D20. Yes. Can we just go kill something, please? Can we just want to kill right. something and not have moral yeah. consequences? Right. right. We wanted, they wanted to kill things and not have to worry about role playing or worry about stress. So we went straight to Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2. Pathfinder 2, yep. It was and, great. And, 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 and we, I think we went to Abomination Balls. Abomination Balls. Oh, yeah. Abomination so we didn't Bolts. even know Pathfinder 2 was bad at that oh, point. Then right. I joined in right at, during right. that. Yeah, that's and we learned Bob them. was bad, but everything else was <laughs> right. That's you learned, learned I could do a puzzle and minis no, no. and play at the same time. No, no. You were doing a puzzle and, and, and minis and watching Star Wars. But I wouldn't Wars. say that you could successfully <laughs> do them. You know yeah. what? That is an example of succeeding, but with limited effect. <laughs> Did he also, succeed, though? I feel like that, that no, definitely stole the that victory. That is also the problem with VTTs. <laughs> no, that's the problem with that, you. That's, I was going to say, <laughs> I, VTTs. I play VTTs fine. Uh, um, <laughs> so, I always have something Our boy Vin in the chat says, yes, Bob, all of that discussion and all those tangents all circle around one question of philosophy. Right. Nightlife is awesome. Also, Smith is right. There you go. But, you go. unfortunate Pumpkin says, oh, I'm, with, shit, I'm, with, right. I'm, I'm with Bob and Derek here. Yep. Just and then Hoyrit said, Tim successfully lands the ship, but he has to torque the steering wheel so hard he tears his arm off. <laughs> okay, no, I'd actually be okay with it. that. I'd be fine. okay with that one, Because too. it yeah. doesn't actually break the ship. It right. doesn't steal from our landing. Correct. <laughs> and I'm okay but with that But if your pilot injury. dies in he landing, die. isn't that a bad landing? Just his arms are dry. Not if he landed fine, I which have. he did because we succeeded. And he's not dead. His, so, okay, wait, 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 wait. No arms. Let's extrapolate it's that. It's a robo arm. Let's extrapolate that. What if the <laughs> ship landed? Yep. Right. Undamaged. Yep. Yeah. But all of you were dead. No, why did they be dead? Why can't they all be injured? <laughs> That's a really severe consequence, but technically fine. You would be okay with that. If I mean, the, at that point, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, at that, we killed it. We all died anyways because... Like, yeah. Somehow, you know, it's like one of those situations where, like, nope, the ship landed perfectly, but it had to execute a but, five thousand yeah. g <laughs> yeah. maneuver. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Internal damp uh, inertial dampeners went offline and, for half a second, and right. everyone turned into goo as they just evaporated. But ship is totally fine. <laughs> ship totally ship fine. Is tip top. Yeah. I I bet we would have loved. We would have been telling that story today about that time <laughs> that we all the, turned to jelly. Wait, what's the what's best the time Derek made a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, well, any I, other questions before yeah, we wrap this show we up? We got a couple more minutes left. Uh, you know, so any questions that you guys have, you know, just go ahead and drop it. We'll try to do one more. But um, 
Yeah, I just said and Derek wants well, to play Fat Bill. No, don't, well, I, don't play this on one of these that I'm. Well, that I, can't I don't play know how or when or where we're gonna play it. We can but play, yeah, on, we play. Okay, okay. We can play on stream. I'm just gonna throw right. it. No, out but there's here. A, there's a lot of things here. I might do another stream. You know, again, I had an opportunity to to talk with the uh, you know the designer yeah. and the authors at Gen Con, and uh, you know they they actually I, I'm on their whatever now their Patreon, um, and so like I have their their techno mancer version, you know, mm-hmm. and then what it is is what makes the game so compelling in a way like Legend of the Five Rings is I like games that are complex that aren't complicated. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I feel awesome. like Fabula Ultima, 13th Age, Legend of the Five Rings, these are all games that feel complex to me with, with richly detailed and rewarding mechanical systems that interlock and interplay with one another. But it doesn't get into the minutia of just, you know, how many plus one bonuses do I have? How many plus two bonuses do I have? It's just like, no, you just do the thing and you're awesome. And, you know, it's just a, a big... Put this out there. This this week's kind of a special week. Mr. Kaz is in town. Um, do you want to like maybe pause their off of our campaign and kick the tires on this on Friday? We could. If, if that's your character sheet, I'm fucking in. I would. I'd be totally in on that. Wait, I, mean, I am going to be over sorry. tomorrow. So, George, if you're watching the stream, uh, Which download is, the uh, was. FU uh, PDF. <laughs> he's always like, "What PDF do I have to download for Friday?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's always like, "With that." Uh, Self confession says, "No pressure." Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's, <laughs> there. he's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Um, oh, Frost Jack. Oh, oh and we have self. Um, well, hold like, uh, Frost Jack with a ten dollars tip says nightlife while I'm working in the morning, finishing my e bike build in the afternoon. That's sweet e bikes are sweet. Yeah, um, they, they actually Star Trek are kind of yeah. sweet. Uh, yeah, we almost got one. Yeah, party in the evening. Great Friday. Thank you for this. Loads of fun. Yeah, oh, Frost nice. Jack, who's over in um, uh, Australia, that it's already, you know, tomorrow. Evening. Oh yeah. So he's in the future. One of my favorite yeah. but, quotes is, don't worry about the world ending today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. That's right. Mm. Right. Um, Be worried when Frost Jack doesn't check in. Because <laughs> then we got problems. <laughs> Speaking of, of Australians, we got self-confessed. Nick said, no pressure, but tell us a little bit about Night Finder. So <clears throat> what Vin is referring to is an idea that I have um, that I'm kind of kicking around, which is, it, it came out of our Kineticist conversation, our massive six-hour video, if you did not go and watch that, where we were really surprised to find that the Kineticist, in my opinion, uh, was a really, really well-designed class, mm-hmm. except metal kind of sucked. Mm. Relative. I mean, it wasn't, it was It was very razored. Ironic. Was metal worse than wood? Yeah, actually, wood ended up getting second place. Interesting. Um, yeah. Because it had so much. Was so air the best? Air was by oh, far the air best. Is, in fact, I would say I that knew air right away was air was very solidly like an S tier. Yeah, that's and what then it looks like. and then all the rest were very solidly A. Cool. And then like metal was like a C minus. Oh, you know, so it, it, it was a pretty significant drop off, and there was a lot of razor problems. And I thought, wow, this is such a cool class. And there were several instances where I said, man, I, I just I wish I would have done this a little bit different. It just one thing needs to be fixed. And one of the things that I've talked about is I really want them to go hard in the paint on this remaster. Mm-hmm. And I know in my heart of hearts that they're not, then they're not going to, right? They're going to just, you know, clean up a couple things and maybe make a couple changes. And so I, I wish they like would make like the witch like the Kinesis. Exactly. I, if they do, yes. I'm looking so, at Starfinder. Like look at the soldier, cool class, but I'm like nowhere near the Kinesis. Right. And so my thought process, and I, I respect mm. that by the way, the Kinesis, it's a complicated class. Very complicated. A lot but of, you know what I'm talking about, right? The flexibility. No, of, of course, it. it's yeah. an amazing class. So what I said is. What if we design it with, with like my, you know, sort of like uh, vision of what would Pathfinder 2 look like, the remaster, mm-hmm. if the Knights of Last Call did it, which is to say, like, it's still Pathfinder 2. It's still totally compatible. But like, what would the because that's different from you know us making our own RPG. Sure. Oh, so but, you can put that in the Battle Cry 3 issue. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's right. Which uh, should be coming out. Uh, well, that no, was, no, actually, uh, actually, that was due, actually, wasn't it? actually, actually, due. actually, we discussed this. And I, five days. <laughs> well, I, actually, we discussed this, and I said, I have 10,000 subs, right, give mm-hmm. or take. We, you know, we're, we're, we're sitting on the 95, 9,600. Um, and um, uh, yes, Lance, August 22nd is Tuesday, <laughs> That's right. and I have a big announcement Ooh. to make. So Smash and pass, too. Um, yes, yeah, smash. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> I will go through all the art. That's not the, our uh, first video in, like, <laughs> Ma- uh, year. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to Rage of Elements. I'll go through all the art, including the items, to tell you if I would smash or pass that item. Mm. That could be what's happening, but um. <laughs> <laughs> so the I basically was like, never know. Spoiler, I was like, there's gonna be a last mission. You know, <laughs> there are classes that I like. In pa- now, this isn't about necessarily <laughs> Daddy Thirsty. This isn't necessarily about I need the a mute Yeah, you, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I could probably make one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't necessarily about like. 
oh, fix all the. I, I want Kinetis to do four hundred thousand damage. I know that's what a lot of like. Sorry, NR players. Super, yeah, get fucked. Super fanboys <laughs> want is just like needs to do max DPS. No, that's not what it's about. What it's about is now. Granted, there are certain is it classes about having twenty feats as available as a free action every round. Right, <laughs> not that either. Mm. It it is about uh improving some of the numerical performance of some of the classes. They are a little underpowered, but it's more about giving classes really fun, unique, rewarding yeah. play patterns and play cycles. And when I saw the kineticist design and the thaumaturge before it, I thought this is just so much more of a fun and compelling class to play. Yeah. The fighter is a very effective class. It's not actually that But it's not actually all that fun and interesting. Yeah. And this may sound crazy. People are going to say, Derek, you're an idiot. What? I would kind of rather play an oracle than a fighter mm, because the fighter is so, you know, pretty vanilla. Yeah. You know, swing, swing, I, attack, attack. The oracle you have way more to bitch about. But so. but but you, you get into the situation. I don't want to be torn between wanting to have fun and be effective. Right. Well, it's like I want to have both. Fourth, right. Yeah. I, Por que no los dos? How would you remake the witch, right? Right. Yeah, we talked about this at length with hacks. Get away from the familiars, or they can have one. Right. Focus on the hexes. Yeah. Focus on like that kind of DOT class, right? right? I want the Scarlet Witch, basically. Yeah. yeah. Just I like hex magic. everything, mm -hmm. right? Well, and the yeah. other thing is too, and this is what we said. Variants and um, stuff like because, that. Because because the reason why it's just you said Battle Cry three, but the, what I was thinking, or what we were talking about, is like obviously we develop it. There are PPDF, but I said, but we have almost ten thousand subs. I go, we have a Patreon of over three hundred. 45 yeah, something people close, close to 350. Right? I don't think it's unreasonable that if we did it and we liked it, we couldn't kickstart it and get it published Whoa. like a physical copy, a book, Maybe. you know? And then, and I said, the Kickstarter would be for two things. Number one, to get a physical copy made PDFs. Sure. We can get those out through the Patreon. Second thing, but getting a physical copy requires capital. Second thing is pay someone to do a foundry build of it. Yeah. Oh. Because quite frankly, no one's going to use it. No one's going to use your product in Pathfinder 2 if it's not in Foundry. Um, so you're talking about a class build that's compatible with PF2, yep. so it's like a modded thing in? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, it would that be was what Derek was saying. It was like PF2, like like mm -hmm. something that we're building, but it works with PF2. Right. It, it, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need new mod. Like, you know, there's a lot of people who have already been, you know, like, oh, we should use this mechanic. No, 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 no. No, That's a bridge too far. Yeah. We, can't, we can't undo the game. Mm -hmm. Right. But what we can do, at least, is the classes and maybe certain elements of the rules that, you know, could maybe be cleaned up a little bit or, 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 or focused some of the feats and skill, right. Anything that's sort of um, plug and playable, yeah. you know, we could hmm. rechange the feats and, and stuff like that and like create things that are more compelling. Make it so that there's not just, oh, there's five good general feats and the rest suck. Right. Make right. it so that there's more compelling options than taking fleet, toughness, die hard, canny acumen, okay. improved initiative, right. um, whatever the expanded resonance one is called. Right. Um, you know, make it so that it's it's more wider choices. Now, I'd rather have, you know, and that. Okay. <laughs> the other thing about this game. Fabulous. Is you and I'm uh, this is brutal. We're just going to make fabulous Pathfinder. OK, this is brutal. There we go. No, no. Well, no, because this does its own thing. There's elements of this game that don't belong in Pathfinder. Because, for example, one of the things I like about Fabula Ultima is it doesn't have a grid at all. Nice. At all. There's not even zones. Right. Oh, it's not even zones. Nope. Oh, I'm used to like close near. Nope. No. Bar. The way it works is that you line up and they line up. Yep. And then you walk forward and attack and then you walk back. You ever, you so it is it. Final Fantasy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, right. Are now, you kidding? Or are you saying this? No, no. That is accurate. Oh, my gosh. Now, so it granted, is. now <laughs> yes. that is how, you know, that is how creatively bankrupt people would describe it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like so excited right now. <laughs> well, sounds, He's like, wait, that's all I have to do? This is amazing. Um, this is very easy. We yeah. stand in a line and okay. smack I each like, other with sticks. Like There's a graphic bar, bar okay. separating but, you from the enemy. But the, the, key, the key thing in this game is like, because they basically say like, you can, there's no move action, right, at all. Like, you can be wherever you need to be, you Jeez. know, but the only thing, so, like, thematically, it's, like, it's your turn. You're, like, okay, I'm running, leaping from crumbling stone to crumbling stone as I sail through the air and attack him. The only thing is some enemies, whether because they have the ability to fly or because they have what the game calls basically tactical flying, are basically at range. Mm -hmm. And you cannot attack them if you have melee weapons. You need a ranged weapon. Okay. Right. That sounds like a, most card games I see. Right. It's like, yeah. oh, it's it's magic. Like, yeah. Magic. Yeah. Is, it's yeah. very, it's, so like that's about as, mm -hmm. but what is super tactical about the game is how do you use your abilities? It's not about the tactical grid. It's about how do you right. stack and use your abilities. Which but is very 13 pages. This is what's Age brutal about this game. There's like 21 classes in the game. And when you level up, you can take a level in any class. 
Yes. But you can only take up to 10 levels in a class. Each class, some, some of these are abilities you buy once, but other ones you can like level up. Each class has about 18 to 19 to 20 points worth of abilities, but you can only ever get 10 Yeah, because then you're, you're capped at the class. So deciding which ones you want is so brutally painful because you're like, I really want all of these. Which just means you play the game. And the game goes, no, you can't have them all because it, it, you can only get to level 10 in a class. That's Bob's unhappy face. But you go to level 50. I can't be right. the strongest. But, but, but I don't like to play a long time either, so I kind of am right. okay with that. So um, <laughs> someone asked, what is the second well, there's book? There's like 50 levels in this So game, the though, second right? book oh, here is called... To do. <laughs> the second book is called The High Fantasy... Wait, you start at level 5. This is called The... Yeah, you, just start, you start at level 5. Is there a level 1? No. Well, then why is 5-5? Five, five? Why is it 5-1? Five five. Because you, have you have start five with 5 levels in classes. Yeah. 5 classes. advancements. Oh. Or you could do five different classes. You can, They don't let you start what? with a maximum of oh, three. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But, like, you could start as, like, a Weapon Master 2, a Me- Weapon Master 2, Wayfarer 1, Elementalist 2. That would be your level five character that it started the game. Hmm. And you would get two abilities from Weapon Master, one ability from the Wayfarer Finder, and two abilities from Elementalist. Or your character could be a four ele- uh, three Elementalist, two um spiritist which is like a you know a healer a white mage now you've got off like lightning bolts and fireballs and heal spells or you could be a orator and a lore master you could be orator two lore master three or you could be lore master two orator two weapon master one you're like i'm a sword sage so you can sort of all in or jack of all trades a little and bit. you can just spin it around and do however you want but anyways the book that the uh, second book here is called fabula ultima atlas high fantasy it just came out at gen con the pdf is available i don't know if there's any other hard copies available? He's saying he doesn't see anything on the at website. Uh, Drive uh, through RPG has the expansion and PDF. In PDF. But if you're interested in that, check it out. We have a link below to our Drive through RPG affiliate link. doesn't cost you any extra money, but we do get a couple of percentage points um, off of that. But anyways, what I like about the game is the same thing I like about 13th Age and all other stuff. It's tactical. It's com- it's complex without being complicated. And it's lots of choices. Sounds Let's like. do both, it. Both oh. character building and in combat. Ton of choices. Yeah. Just ton of choices. Just very, very, very cool. So. But also um, fast too, because I know you don't have like 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 a lot of the damage is set. No, it's the set. Effects of spells are set. It it it, it is everything also like low uh, numbered. Yep. Um, yeah. So like here, monsters don't have three hundred. No. Nope. So hit the way points, it works, like, freaking yeah. So the way it works is basically, um, your character's gonna start with like thirty to forty hit points, and you gain one hit point a level. Okay. So what are monsters? Depends. Uh, you know, if it's like a mega ultimate super huge boss. Might have like 180 hit points. Okay. If it's a normal monster, it's still a lot though. Well, that's because it's like the big. It's like yeah, the NR. Well, like, I'm just saying. It's like how many hit points the tr- we've talked about this spot of like have magic and like Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like why not just cut the zero off right. and bring it all down by ten? Yeah, no, they, they they work on a very also all the damage in the game is basically like all the hit points in the game are like in tens. Okay, that's you know, good. pretty much like that. Um, so and, and just like a metric system and there, by and someone. The, well, and there's like little <laughs> there's like little tiny things that just improve like efficiency of play. And this is me getting really really gripey, like the way that the game works is you most weapons say damage is hr plus a number like a big axe might be like hr plus 14 a uh, small dagger might be like hr plus six highest roll plus six that's your highest roll plus six so you roll your two dice to attack i got an eight and a six so my total to hit was 14 cool uh, that hits i rolled an eight as my highest die i add that to oh, six. So you don't have to roll again. For nope, damage. there's no rolling that's, again that, for damage. Nice. Oh, it saves one dice roll. Right. So it, it 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 you know it's just designed to be pretty okay. fast and efficient. Cool. So, well, I'll have to I'll have to probably get the PDF yeah. and then I'll order the book. Maybe I'll. Uh, go I don't know. Our, I mean, go through our favorite local game store it, it, to uh, get me the book. It <laughs> it definitely has like a very like strong like 13th age kind of vibe to me. Okay. Um, but what I like about it is because it's 50, because it's 50 levels. You level up a lot quicker. Yeah. But it's not the same kind of leveling up like you would get in a Pathfinder game. And right. because it, and this may sound do you stupid. you level up multiple times in a session? Yeah, it's probably unlikely. So do you do like 50 sessions? So 45. 45? 45. 45. Oh. Long time. But you're, because you're leveling at such an uh, accelerated rate, it's right. almost more interesting to play. Right. Because sometimes like you get into those dead zones in D&D Pathfinder right. games where you're like, right. oh, I, I just hit the, that level, so... Well, that's that's support too. Every time you level up in this game, you're picking a new ability. Oh, Ryan's game does one level of the game. So right, okay. that's what, that would still be your example of forty five yeah. games. Still, um, yeah, it's a long t- if you're going all the way. Yeah, you're right. If you're going all the way, there is a um, they do have a thing in here about uh, at high level or optional advancement rules beyond like the way that you normally gain experience. 
And one of them is, uh, so the way it works is 10 XP gives you a level. And um, 10 XP gives you a level. You you get 5 XP just for showing up to the session. Oh, yeah. And then you get more XP if your group basically spends hero points. And then you also get more XP if the GM spends villain points. Okay. So that's how you get more XP. There's one option called the booster option. Each player character will automatically gain a level at the end of each session, in addition to the normal advancement. Mm. Nice. Oh, so you could double. So you still you get your XP. Fast mode. Every second, you're, dub you're double leveling, basically. You're, you're, well, you're going to level every session. Yeah. And then you also gain every the XP sessions. that you would gain. You might you might level twice in one session. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you do nothing else other uh, than show it's up. It's good if your campaign will be relatively short. If the players like to have plenty of new tricks every uh, session, and you don't mind turning your game into a quickly escalating spiral of chaos and mayhem. And, it, it, and it is Ryan with the two shields. I knew it was Ryan. Um, so anyways. His artwork, I'll show you. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I agree, Frostjack. Totally Playing five agree, sessions Frost. and then leveling up, and it's a dead level uh, is like... That's oh, it's awful. <sighs> I, we played fast leveling in um, Dark of Winter, right? right? which yeah, was nice. Session, which and, and, nice. And I got to be honest with you. Part of it is, look... <laughs> I don't play games like I used to. We were, we were talking about that. We used to play three times a week sometimes. Yeah. We'd play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. We'd play you for play all night on like Friday. And we, we, yeah. we'd oh. play for 10 hours on a Friday. So night kind of together then. Right? So we would just have these insane things. So it's like, oh, yeah, I don't care. I level up. Uh, I, I, you, it takes 20 hours of play. Yeah, I still level up once a week. Right. Because I'm playing for 20 hours. Yeah. Right. But nowadays, yeah. there's no we way. We play the same game every week. <laughs> right. There's, we can't even get the same group together, you know. So I, I can't. I can't play a game where, you know, we play forever and, you know, nothing happens. Sounds awful. Right. Because, again, now, there are games that don't have any advancement, and that's different. But for a game that does have advancement, it's like, no, I got to have it, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah, you know, got to get it, uh, got to get it quicker than that. All right. Well, Cats, thank you. Yo, good to see you guys again. Yeah. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully more. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Caswell. And uh, more sooner. Yeah, soon. yeah, more sooner indeed. And that'll Sounds be really awesome. fun for us and, and fun for the channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> like, do you actually guys like watch seeing Cavs? I'll be, I'll be inflicted <laughs> upon comments, you all. If you like seeing Cavs. Yeah. There you go. Um, as a reminder, of course, we are still deep into the early phases, I would say. The, the first, first part of our Northern Reaches campaign is coming to a close. But there's still a lot of time left. Yeah. Um, it's running till the, the end of the year. Of the year. Yep. Right. Um, and uh, when you come into a game, um, you Cash questions of the day. The 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 group, uh, the community has been hard at work. If you mm -hmm. join Northern Reaches today, you don't even have to make a level one character. You get to start with I think, level, level two. Two. Mm -hmm. two. And we have rules that allow lower level characters to play at higher level uh, yep. with other higher level adventures, not feel like they suck. So um, I would say that if you are interested in Pathfinder two, and you really want to play in a really unique and interesting way. You know, a lot of the things that we, you know, a lot of the ideas that Smith has about how do you make this a more interesting and compelling game, uh, they're kind of in northern reaches. Mm -hmm. And and it's all about making really tough decisions, player-driven decisions. Um, you know, the core mechanics of the game are still, still Pathfinder, Pathfinder. Still Pathfinder 2. Um, so if you like your, you know, feats and moving on a grid and attacking things, I mean, that's all there. It's really more about, like, what are you fighting for mm -hmm. and what are you doing as part of a community? Nice mouse guard reference. Yeah, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we've got Northern Reaches as part of our Patreon. We've got also a lot of uh, other benefits to our Patreon, merch, mm -hmm. uh, bonus videos from our old stuff. Community uh, games. Community games, access to our Discord, the whole. If you are playing Fabula Ultima. Uh, people in our community, <laughs> yes. we have a community game of Fabula Ultima. We also have Traveler, a believe, Traveler, something like yeah. a 25 Ben now, I think, has 25 players for his first edition AD&D AD &D campaign. Oh, wow. Um, Jeez Louise. So, uh, I think 40 not at once. Floating around there. Not at once. Oh, oh we so have a whole section of Discord that's it's just like, play-by-post. It's basically, play by post it's basically Northern control. Reaches, but the yes. only GM is Ben. Okay, so then it really is almost like a West Mark. <laughs> and it's, it's, yeah. mu it's much yeah. more like a West Traditional Mark. Traditional West Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan, or is it oh, actually West Mark? community games. We have two community games of Fabula Ultima, yeah. So... Um, and yeah. uh, we have a, we, uh, there's a very big thriving play, a drop in, drop out traveler game mm -hmm. that is going on in the community. There's a Pathfinder 2 hack with Blades in the Dark, um, uh, Forged uh, P Pathfinder in the Dark or something that uh, Darth Gorlock did. Um, Boothby's still running Strange Aeons. Oh, he is still doing that. So, like, we have just, a, oh, there's an Avatar game 
Oh yeah, the Avatar game. S there's a City of Mist game starting soon, yeah. so someone I mean, needs to run Mutant Chronicles. I mean, there's just an insane. Well, why don't you run it there, <laughs> Mister Cat? So there's just an insane level of gaming that's occurring. I mean, I sets, and, and, I'll, and I'll be honest with you, the it's reason like twenty games a week or something. Uh, it slowed down this last NR? week. Okay. It definitely but slowed it, down. It was it was averaging three games a day. Well, those, that's just NR. I'm saying total. Oh, sorry. For Northern Reaches, we were averaging three three games a day. Yeah. Okay, but that slowed down to about one a day, one or two a day this last week. Baldur's Gate three. Baldur's uh, Gate three kind of. Uh, <laughs> <put a> lot, <laughs> Baldur's Gate. You know. Oh, there's a four E game. Oh, right. There's the fourth yep. edition game. Yeah, yeah. I think so DM Samuel has a fourth like, edition there's a, there's game. There's too. a community game almost every day. I, I feel like I see, and then yeah. Northern Reach is like trickled in there, like all over the place. <laughs> all right, all right Vin just bought Fabula Ultima. Oh, he's yeah. got yeah. it. Oh, it. oh, Vin, this is got definitely him. Your game. okay. Uh, you know what? We may we may have to have like a like a like a Fabula Ultima read through. Uh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I like, yeah. Because I just think it's I think it's a very fun and compelling game. And I and here's the thing: even if it's not your game, there are things that they are doing. I, I've said this before. I have never been about mana systems. Mm -hmm. MP. Yeah. Because this I thought because I thought MP is just when, when, in, in um. I liked them in Final Fantasy. I'm talking about like in uh, D and D games. Yeah, yeah, people are just like, I like PowerPoints. I don't want to use slots. I want to use MP. And what it they're felt really the same. What they're really saying, right? They felt the same. And what they're right. really saying is, I don't want to be able to cast. I want to turn all my level one, two, three, and four slots it into level five, nine. six, nine yeah. slots. Yeah. Right? That's really what they're saying. They're saying I want to be a cheesy right, right. car op git. This is the first game that uses MP. Of course, it does. Final Fantasy. Yeah, and I love it. Oh, <laughs> nice. The way the what they did with this was brilliant. And the way what they did with it is you have a very small list of spells, you know, flame or fire, yeah. you know, uh, bolt, you know, whatever. And everything else in the game is it's a ritual, but it's not a cool. list. Oh. It's not a list of rituals. It's a lot like this will make sense to nobody. It's a lot like sagas build a spell. Got it. It has a chart yeah. where you basically say, how big is the area? Yeah. How many people is it affecting? Um, um, uh, for a few people who bought it, uh, kind of similar but better. Third edition Epic Handbook Spell Seed System. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's like you basically can create your own ritual, and then the, the GM has this nice little chart that mm -hmm. lets basically say, okay, this will be the difficulty, Yep. and this is the MP. Yeah. And the MP is pretty large, so it can sometimes take multiple characters, or you need a special item to... Yeah, pay well, pay yeah. part of the MP cost. And unlike most of the other checks in the game, a ritual, if you fail the check, basically has a consequence. Yeah. You know, like it, it's like a six minus yeah, yeah. in in it in sounds power. like a, a more like a math ability version of Dungeon World's yes. uh, ritual system. It, 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 yeah. It's just like Dungeon World's ritual system, except it's a little bit more free form. Yeah. In fact, they even have a rule where they say you can do this in combat. You just you create a clock. Uh, oh. And like everybody in the group can like take their action to try to complete the clock, oh, okay. oh, that's really cool. and then like and so like you and they have like the a ritual like bind the demon absolutely yeah. while you're in the combat yeah. fighting. Oh, oh, it's so awesome! It's such that, appropriate right. for the book. and it's so appropriate, right? So, um, and, what I'm really excited about about this system is, and you guys know this, but like my favorite, uh, the thing I love to play in RPGs, MMOs, or, or tabletop is the support character. And it's one of the things that's usually done so poorly yeah. in games. The last time I had fun off a sport kicker was fourth edition. So, you know, 12 years ago, right? Uh, I'm really looking forward to just white maging it up, picking up, maybe pick up like elemental so I can like throw a rock or something. Or but red like, mage it. I mean, I love red mage too. But yeah. yeah. No, there it, right oh, now. there oh, it is. Oh! <laughs> what is turn, it? Turned this way. Basically, oh, Warlord. Perfect. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Warlord's back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now I got a hard choice. Yeah. In the, in the fantasy supplement book, they added four new. Um, they added four new classes. They added the uh, Chanter, a.k.a. the Bard or the Idol nice. or the Troubadour. Nice. They added the Dancer. They added the command. That's a Final Fantasy class. That, I mean, they added the commander and Fantasy they added class. the symbolic, a uh, symbolist, which is a lot like um, Strago or from Final Fantasy VI. Blue mage. Uh, more like uses like like writing and painting. Okay. Uh, to like oh, attack. Gotcha. You know, like that. It's a really you know, it's very Final Fantasy. Yeah. I mean, same. And here's how you know, in any other game, I would absolutely hate this idea of a dancer. Right. 
I would hate it. But Final Fantasy? Totally. But in Final Fantasy, it's totally oh, fine. Yeah. Because that is just so it on. It fits the setting. It fits the setting. And, yeah. it, and that's why I always say, it's not that I don't like these things, people. It's not that I don't. I love my dogs. I tell them every day that they're the cutest things I've ever seen. And I go, oh, yeah, I love you so much. You're such a good boy. I love Have you ever so heard Dirk talk to his animals? It's kind of similar to how he talks weird. to his girlfriends. It's a little like, <laughs> <laughs> you kind of want to leave the room. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. I'm sorry. Damien is 100%, right? Wash my hands now. Realm. Realm is the character from Final Fantasy VI. Yes, okay, that makes sense. Her uncle or father was, Strago was, was the blue mage he was like the blue mage yeah Strago yeah that was, was her grandfather. grandfather grandfather can i suplex a train yeah in this game uh, yeah. uh, yes, yes. This, this, this would be a game where you could suplex the train <laughs> and by the way there would be like 100 <laughs> <Yep. laughs> right there would be no in fact problem. if you don't we're gonna think you're a bitch. right no actually it would it would probably have vulnerable suplex <laughs> <laughs> All trains in this game. Yeah, all vulnerable trains are vulnerable to suplexes. That's just that's 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 Final Fantasy lore. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like when I when I say that I don't like cute things, it's like no, I don't mean that. I mean I don't like cute things in a game that isn't cute. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. The, I don't like when things are out of you know out appropriate. I, you know, I think what some people like is they like the oh I'm so I'm being so you know I'm I'm, I'm subverting so many expectations. Uh, oh yeah. My character's my character's so cute. He carries uh, around a gigantic blood-stained axe and he kills people. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm so I'm so cute and unique. I fucking hate that. I, like I know. And I, that's why I fucking hate you. <laughs> oh, so when Bob is pissing oh, a chibi, a chibi with a big axe oh, sounds geez. amazing. Yeah. Grimdark right. with a splash of Kawhi. So like Warhammer 40K, but with furries. Yeah, what's weird about with that chibis. though is like, <laughs> with like chibi, chibi versus falls into that weird middle spectrum. But, we're, we are cute, but we're doing terrorism. Right, but to be fair, Root is... We're not really cute, we're just more animal. Yeah. Have you seen the Ar Again. <laughs> Have you seen Artemis, who Artemis is a war is criminal? Yeah, He's okay, cute. to be clear, I made that art before I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did not expect the amount of war crimes that was going to happen. Um, <laughs> S.E. Valdo. Oh, in Rich. Rich Rich Camp in the chat says, just got done with overtime. Stopping by to say hello, my friends. Hello. Did you guys hear about the story about the pallet of MTG yes. stuff getting sold at Gen Con? Yes. yes. It was it was all over Gen Con. It was a huge story. But the best part is, there's a funny follow-up to this. They found, oh, this is so good. The people. They found the people. The Pinkertons got them? No, no. <laughs> they found the people because wizards didn't get stolen from. You know, some, oh, yeah, correct. Right. Some merchant or some distributor. They went in, I think the day before Gen Con, when everything was getting still set up, they grabbed a pallet jack and took it out. So obviously when they scrubbed through the security camera footage, it took yeah. them a couple of days. It wasn't, wasn't too hard to find, you know. A pallet the, jack. A pallet jack being wheeled away. <laughs> oh, that must be it. <laughs> and faces are fine, but you know, how are you gonna, it could be still difficult to find people. Sure, fair enough. Luckily, the one guy was wearing the t-shirt to the game that he that made. He made. They were game. They were game creators themselves. They were game creators themselves. Wow. Who turned criminal? Yes. Who, and he's. This is what happens if you don't make a game for Five E. You have to go to crime. <laughs> <laughs> you must resort to crime. This is what this is what Five E has done for us. Um. So, so anyway, much for Night Finder. But yes, it was it was it was it was that and Lorcana and the fights that were breaking out in Lorcana lines of uh, the Disney card oh, game yeah. were basically the talk of of Gen Con. So but really, um, Rich, when you come back to play some games, that's right. Uh, Rich's answer is going to be when we play ones that he likes. That, I mean, does I Rich loves anime? I don't know. I don't know. Rich is a fan. I don't know if he's a fan. Because like, to be clear, I don't like anime. I, I hate anime. Rich likes anime. Though. This that's not anime. It's not anime. It's a, it's weeb light. It's, and to be clear, yeah. like this to me feels very. Final Fantasy four, mm -hmm. six, nine, one, they, they two, just got the book and he's seven. already pitching. Eight. Really don't like <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> FU book reactions really don't like the font and formatting. By the way, every one of the reasons it won a gold for best was for best was because people are like, this book is so cleanly designed. The formatting is amazing. Well, they didn't talk to Ben, so I guess their opinions don't matter. <laughs> Throw away the gold. But I'm go. loving the writing and the art. Okay, so the, it's not all bad. All right. But um the art is pretty. You awesome. just gotta remember. If I can like this game, Vin, there, there's hope. There's hope for you. But to be fair, it does have narrative things that make the game fun. So Vin might not like it. You know, you it's know, true. You know. The game um, also looks well designed, so he also may not like it. Uh, 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 oh. Rich is ready. If we ever play D and D or Pathfinder, I assume you mean Pathfinder one, uh, or when I finally redo the EverQuest RPG. There you go. You know what? Stay golden. Stay golden, Rich. Stay golden. All right. We, um, you know, we do need to have uh, DTX two at some point. D DTX two would be fun. Um, somebody. Oh, somebody said something about DT, not DTX, but they said, uh, oh, everyone about DTX is Dungeon Time Extreme. It's like a hack, hack mask, torches deep. 
it, it's Five Torches Deep, Deep. Five, Fifth Edition Hats. plus Derek doesn't know the rules of Fifth Edition. Yes. Right. right. It was a combination of me not knowing how Fifth Edition works plus some indie game stuff. Right. Plus old school Which torchbearer mechanics. Correct. So yeah. much easier and better. Oh, it was, yeah. it was fan. It was a yeah. fun time to play. All yeah. the way through. And we played Caves of Chaos. Which is also super fun. Bob, get it right. It's the uh, name of the adventure. Uh, oh, oh, it's called wait, 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 some, uh, something on the Borderlands. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, what would be on the Borderlands? Um, keep keep. Yeah, on the Borderlands. yeah. Well <laughs> he done. Made well, it. Now, when you're at the keep on the Borderlands, so you go and explore right the caves of chaos. The caves of chaos, right. which looks like a penis. They, a penis. <laughs> it all comes back to that little fiddly. Um, <laughs> Uh, Brian says barkeep on the board. I picked that up, Brian, at uh, Gen Con. I picked up barkeep on the Borderlands. Yeah, what's for barkeep sure. on the Borderlands? Uh, it's like it's like a, a bar. It's like a bar crawl adventure, but like kind of a parody of, oh, of it's like keep a on the Borderlands. Thing? Yeah, yeah. so it's D and D. It's barkeep on the Borderlands. Uh, yeah. Horrid, great idea. And actually, when we first started DTX. Uh, my plan it, yeah. was to write everything down and make this a module that at the very least we could give to the uh, players. But uh, Derek was unable to write down any of the rules and they changed literally all every the session. The whole time they changed. Every so session there was nothing changed. for me to work with. It was a <laughs> work session. in progress, a fluidic work in progress. Work I mean, progress. it worked. And it was no, fun. No, 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 I'm not it, complaining. I had a great time. I'm just pointing out it made it really hard to like make a play. Yeah, because it was no, we would be playing. Rules. Yeah, we would be playing and it would be like the third session right. and I would do something and then someone would say, yeah, no, that doesn't really feel that right. I was like, you know what? You're right. And you're like, I think it should be this yeah. way. And I go, okay, it's that way. It was now. like flying a plane that you're making. <laughs> right. <laughs> You were, we were, we were strapping the skin on the wings as we were crashing. My brother still talks about like because we were talking, we were, we were talking to someone and we were playing, talking about playing RPGs, and he's like, "No, nah, we played this one with Derek, and it was so cool without a grid." So we, we went in, and this, this like log. On, oh, he loved on, that fight. Log on two ropes, like crushed into Bob, did a lot of damage. But then we got Smith and Bob grabbed the log, and they were gonna smash it into the goblins. But then I jumped on the log and shot an arrow, and Derek was just making up like the rules on the fly, like, okay, that the log's gonna do this much damage because mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this how how are we gotta figure this out. And then Danny's like accuracy, but he has to use like balance agility to like balance on the log. Right. And he was like, that was like the coolest thing. Like, and and if you think that sounds extreme, then I also ruled that if there was ever four dwarves oh, present, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which again it, only it happened twice. Players. Right. Players. It did. It no, did. we had way more than five players. Six. We had Rich. We had your brother. Yeah. We had Kaz. We had you. George. We had Smith. We had George. We had George. We had six. So that, we had six. No, six. seven. Six. They had the shield wall. Oh, Tim never showed up. Tim never showed up. We had Tim six. Never okay, up. we had six. We had okay, six. we had six. But well, Tim, Tim showed up dwarfs. once oh, remotely. Yes. But. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. So but yeah, four dwarves. We yeah, but we, had, but we had four dwarves in the party, and we said no one has ever actually had four dwarves in a party before. Yeah. And I said, this is this call, like, oh, yeah. the secret allure is unlocked. When four dwarves are together, they can combine their inner dwarves, souls and summon them. an earth elemental and bind it to their command. Now, here's the thing. No, no, no. It, it, we couldn't bind it to our command. Oh, you had to fight it. The earth elemental was <laughs> always a, hostile. It had a fucking diamond in it. Right. The yes. only purpose to summon the earth elemental was to kill it for experience and its loot. And gold. Yes. Right. I forgot about that. And, and, and Derek rolled so bad on its, like, health mm -hmm. that we just owned, oh, we destroyed we it. it. Derek had some epic, <laughs> awful rolls. Oh, like, between some of the, between some of the, the worst elemental rolls. and the owlbear. The owlbear oh, was the... And the dragon. Oh, that dragon was... we. I was, was there for that. That, that was, was embarrassing. Was um, but no, like, but because of the inconsistency is getting everybody together, uh, they get you guys only summoned the, the elemental twice yeah. in twice, the entire yeah. campaign. Yeah. Even though there were four dwarves in the party, right. there were never four dwarves at there at the same time. Right. But like that was in a house, the whole shield wall formation uh, thing, yeah, which so basically good. became drudge, the bedrock, drudge, drudge, drudge. became the bedrock of your guys' entire formation and, yeah. and strategy while fighting your way through the caves. Would be the shield wall. Uh, was like, was like, that was made up. Yeah, on the on Dirt's the fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was like if teamwork feats were actually good. <laughs> good, right, exactly. yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how you write all that stuff down. <laughs> like, right, I, I, you know, this is where the whole thing. Of like, I, I did put a summary of it in the Discord. If uh, someone really cares. Yeah, this this is like where like the whole like record your session or yeah. you know so you can go back and look at it. But you know whatever. I mean, we have a lot of great. Listen, none not, of that campaign was fit for Patreon <laughs> listening. To. Oh, there was no. none of it. Yeah, none you think it. we're bad? I mean, we got we, we got feats. That were like bad. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there were some bad feats. Yeah. I had to like erase when I was taking photos. <laughs> like I had to screen them out. I was like erasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty funny. You can ask me on the Patreon. Oh, yeah. on the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
Here we go. I'm going to end it. Uh, these guys have been great. You yep. guys have been great. Thank you so much for the incredible support tonight. Uh, I look forward to talking about, oh, Vin does like that it like has, it's got clocks. Oh, great. So that's, go. that, thank you, Vin. I, yes. We will discuss. Again, I, I think it's a great game. I think it has a lot of potential. And I'm really excited. They're, they're a young company. They're really excited. They've got a really fast release. Well, tomorrow. They're, 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 is this their only game? Is. Uh, I don't know. I think. Maybe I think this oh, might so be. You say they're young, but like, does that like do they, do they build up to this? It's certainly their only game that has really made this kind of impact. Okay. But you know, again, a lot of people are are digging it, and what I like about it is it feels different. You know, one of the things I I, did, I when I play a game, I'm like, oh, this game's good, but it, I I have four other games that kind of do something very similar. Mm-hmm. This feels like this does something very unique and different. This to me is a great bridge between the sort of washy, nothing matters, make it all up, fun narrative. Yeah. You can just oh, I'll just you know, change the, you know, spend, spend a point And now everybody's my friend and the dice rolls don't matter. And we're just making it up versus like the hardcore simulations game. This, this game has a pretty cool, interesting space in the rules. All right. Well, I look um, forward to seeing tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll kick the tires on tomorrow. All right. Well, thank you. thank you, Kaz, Bob, Mr. Smith. Thank, thank you, guys you for, for having me. In. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for stopping by. Remember, check us out. We have a link in the description below, patreon.com slash nice last call. If you want to join our Discord, we have a couple different tiers that we'd love to see you there if you want to keep talking about games. And God knows we touched on a bunch of them tonight. Yeah, there's um, actually a lot of games talking yeah, about tonight. Uh, you know, and and it's pretty much a microcosm for what our community is about. There's a lot of talk about Pathfinder 2. There's a lot of talk about the new hotness and the new uh, games. And then there's up. and then, then there's a lot yeah. of talk about classics. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's sort of the three pillars. It's like a 50-year-old science fiction RPG. Right. The, the, those are yeah. the three pillars <laughs> of our of our of our show or of our channel is old school not like osr even but like actual old school games right, right. um we like you know in fact i would say osr is kind of underrepresented in our in our community a little bit like we're more likely to play bx or first edition than like one of these new I, I new sr like, type things we like lived that era yeah i mean so we we, like we, we have an older demographic yeah. we're, we're part of that we have people on our you know uh channel who are in their 50s and 60s so like they live through that we you know, have we, a strong osc group yeah i mean it's there, but I think yeah. you're more likely to see a first edition campaign than 100%. you would. Have. And then we, like I said, there's always the new hotness. We love the new hotness. Right. Flavor of the week, as we call it, or flavor yeah. of the month. Flavor of the month. Mm-hmm. And then Pathfinder 2, you know, because that's what it is. The only thing that's really kind of missing from our entire no game. One plays D&D. No one plays fifth edition fifth D&D. Edition. Yeah. So that's and they a, might uh, off the channel. They don't, yeah, they, really they might they the might with their home group, but it's just yeah. not. A but big... We all play BG three apparently. Everyone's playing Baldur's Gate. So what what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what does that say? Who knows? <laughs> right. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining, and we will see you next time on Nights of Last Call. Bye, everybody. Peace.